Magandang umaga po mga kaibigan. It's uh, Wednesday. And today we will have our round table with Philippine Press Institute. Over the years nakita po natin mga kaibigan yung pagyabong ng party list at ganun din po naman uh, yung kanilang pinakalayunin ay kumatawan doon sa mga nakalilimutang sektor ng lipunan. Kaya yan ay magsasaka, kaya yan ay mangingisda, kaya yan ay manggagawa o mga karaniwang naninirahan sa mga barangay. Subalit, uh, hindi po nagtagal ay nagbago ang sistema sa party list. Uh, nagkaroon po ng mga pamilya na nakakapasok sa party list. At meron din mga advocacies na hindi mo maisip kung talaga bang neglected sa lipunan. You know, it's heartening to know that people make use of the party list para manatili sa poder. Of course, we've heard of provinces where political dynasties have lorded over. Ano bang meron sa atin? Nariyan yung mga magkakamag-anak, kundi man ay mag-asawa, assuming posts sa executive o sa legislative. What is wrong with us? Has political patronage and the feudal system taken deep roots in our society that we could never break from it? That is the question. We will attempt to discuss all the issues involved today. Kasama po natin mga kaibigan uh, ang mga resource persons natin from different sectors. But before we move on to introducing them formally, let's have a few words from our good friend Ariel Civilino, Executive Director ng Philippine Press Institute. Good morning, Ariel. Good morning, Kuya Mela. Good morning, everyone. Good morning to our panelists and to our audience who are watching us live on Facebook. Um, we're so happy to bring you another significant discourse, this time on political dynasty and uh, party list. Matagal po namin pinag-isipan ko ano magiging kasunod na topic namin after the successful run uh, of the February, uh, the January and February roundtable discussions. Sabi namin, it's about time to bring back to the table the discussion on political dynasty and party list kasi medyo nagging and recurring yung, ano, yung demand for it as a topic. Uh, siguro din, hindi lang siya para maintindihan lalo ng, ng, ng publiko. But I think uh, media plays a vital role, a pivotal role in really uh, putting to the fore all these discussions on partilists and political dynasties. Meron lang, bago ito, Kuya Melo, bago itong roundtable na to meron lang konting katanungan siguro na dapat na, na, nasagutin ng mga panelists natin. Uh, inaabuso ba daw ang party list? Meron pa ba daw itong silbe? Tapos sa political dynasty naman, ito ba yun nagpapahirap sa mga tao sa komunidad uh, na habang nasa pwesto sila, mas lalong humihirap yung, is- yung mga residente na isang komunidad? Mga, those are f- a few, f- few questions lang po na uh, parang, you know, no? sort of informal survey bago itong uh, roundtable na to. Uh, we're so happy to partner again and we thank the full support of Hans Heidel Foundation for this yet another significant discussion on uh, on the state of affairs of, uh, of our country. Also partly because PPI and Hans Heidel Foundation are also dishing out our voter education program. We're rolling out, um, well, all of the programs on PPI this year and uh, up to next year before the elections, I nandun po uh, tinatawag namin na, na voter education, whether it's the round table or a training or a scholastic. So maraming salamat to you for effectively moderating this roundtable. At this point, having said about thanking uh, Hans Heidel Foundation, I'd like to call the project officer, one of the project officers of Hans Heidel Foundation based in Makati uh, on behalf of Attorney Gatsa Heineke, the resident representative of Hans Heidel Foundation of the Philippines, who will be called later in the closing program. Welcome, Caroline Lee. Hi, Caroline. Hi, Carol. Hello, How are you? Hi, good morning. Good morning. Good morning, yeah. everyone. I'm Carol D, uh, program officer, one of the program officers of the Anzido Foundation. It is uh, shortly on the HSF. It's a German foundation, uh, has been here for more than 40 years already, building up uh, 
with the goal of building up democracy and good governance. And we are absolutely thrilled to be with uh, you again this Wednesday. This is like the ninth uh, RTD already. And we're absolutely thrilled to be working with the Philippine Press Institute in supporting these activities where we can, uh, these pressing issues in society are being discussed. And we're, uh, we, we have quite a lineup of uh, illustrious guests for this morning's uh, topic on party lists and on the political dynasty, which I understand from some people are quite a phenomenon for the Philippines. Uh, it would be, this would be a good chance to know more about these phenomena and understand how, what kind of role they play in the political arena in the Philippines. So uh, with this, I wish everyone a very insightful discussion this morning with uh, Sir Melo Acuna here leading the discussion. We're sure it will be very uh, informative and will clear up quite a lot of questions for sure our audience have in their minds right now. So with that, thank you very much, everyone. We're looking forward to the discussion. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. So let's begin. Let me introduce our guests today. We have uh, the heavyweights on board today. Joining us is one of the most famous lawmakers at the House of Representatives. He's often mentioned by no less than the president. I'm referring to Representative Carlos Isagani Caloy Zarate of the Makabayan Bloc, and he's with Bayan Muna. We also have with us Dr. Herman Joseph S. Kraft, the chair of the Department of Political Science, College of Social Sciences and Philosophy at the University of the Philippines, the best university in Diliman. And uh, of course, we also have with us attorney Michael Henry Yusinko, Supreme Lecturer at Non-Resident Research Fellow, Duluman sa pinakamagaling na universidad sa Katipunan. Yan po yung Ateneo School of Government or ASOG sa Ateneo de Manila University. And we have with us Dr. Chester Cabalza. Siya po yung Senior Lecturer uh, sa graduate program ng Department of Anthropology ng University of the Philippines, Diliman. Pero he had the pleasure to study in Beijing and in the University of Delaware where Joe Biden comes from. So let's begin our discussions today. We also expect uh, Congressman Ron Salo of the Cabayan Party List to sit with us a bit later and Attorney Antonio Ligon, uh, a professor at the best university along Taft Avenue, and that's De La Salle University. Congressman Caloy, coming from the party list, uh, how do you look at the situation today when you sit with lawmakers from the party list groups who come from different persuasions, from different advocacies? Well, uh, thank you, Sir Melo. But before uh, answering your uh, query, I agree. Uh, blessed good morning. Uh, sa ating lahat ng mga kasama na yung umaga sa uh, roundtable discussion ito to uh, Sir Ariel Sibirido, ang director ng uh, Philippine Press Institute, uh, kay Ma'am Carol Lee of the uh, Uncycled Foundation, Dr. Kawalsa, and uh, of course, to uh, Professor Herman Kraft. Uh, Magandang umaga po sa ating mga. Well, uh, uh, very uh, interesting question. No? Uh, because, uh, you know, Melo, uh, when uh, the party list law was passed in 1988 and the first election took place, I think in the, uh, 2000, uh, 1998, yeah, uh, first election, uh, ang uh, consideration ng uh, mga party list noon is para silang mga second class citizen daw doon sa house. Ano? In fact, uh, there was a, uh, it was even uh, labeled as just a token, uh, uh, an act of tokenism no? inserted into our our constitution to give the so-called marginalized sector principally a representation in the House of Representatives. No? Kaya 20% ang inallocate ng, uh, ng uh, ating constitution. No? And uh, this is a very unique uh, system, uh, only in the Philippines, as they say, 
kasi kinuha lang natin yung mga features from other countries i think from the scandinavian and european countries no uh, and inserted into our constitution na hindi naman tayo actually parliamentary uh, system of government no presidential pa rin so but since then uh, if, if i may say no uh, this uh, I, 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 uh, I suppose that uh, ang stand talaga namin, there is an urgent need to restore the partly system to its original purpose, which is to give the uh, marginalized sector representation or voice in Congress. Uh, I can say also, Melo, na at this point, no, malayo na rin yung naabot ng uh, partly system sa Pilipinas. No? Uh, in fact, if you uh, go now to the House of Representatives, I think for the first, first time, uh, halimbawa, kami sa minority block. Uh, for the first time, I think the minority leader is a uh, representative coming from the party system, not from uh, the big parties no? or from the district uh, uh, representative. Mm -hmm. uh, the, uh, I am now also a uh, deputy minority leader. No? And kung tingnan mo naman dun sa majority uh, block, uh, several deputy speakers, although napakarami na deputy speakers, I think there are more than 30 deputy speakers, but... Uh, uh, many deputy speakers come from uh, the party list groups. No? So, but having said that, uh, yes, I, I again go back no, uh, to that uh, earlier uh, statement that I said na dati, ang treatment sa party list system representative ay parang a second class a house. Now, they cannot say that, no? na mga second class. In fact, uh, ang isa sa pinakamasugid at talagang pinakaaktibos either in the committee levels or even in the floor, no? especially now during the pandemic, uh, ang mga halos araw-araw na umaaten dyan at nakikipag-talakayan, uh, nakikipag-debate are representatives coming from the party list. No? So, uh, if I may say, napakalaki. No? Kahit na sabi mong token ito, in terms of uh, pushing for uh, meaningful legislations, no? ay napakalaki na nang nagawa din ng... Uh, mga miyembro ng party list sa ating House of Representatives since the first election in 1998. No? But uh, again, having said that, I know na, na, na maraming problema pang da, mala, uh, dapat uh, masolusyonan. No? How to strengthen our party list system in, uh, uh, in line with the conflicting decisions in the past no? by uh, uh, the Supreme Court on sino ba talaga ang pwedeng magiging uh, kinatawan ng mga party list at sino yung pwedeng tumakbo or sino yung mga organizations or uh, parties that can register and run in the party list system. Uh -huh. So yun siguro first ko na uh, statement dyan, um, Melo, to answer Napaka your question. Ganda nun. Na Napakaganda nun sinabi ninyo sapagkat I covered the House of Representatives in 1994 at noon wala pa yung party list. Sectoral representatives pa lang. Meron yes. youth, sectoral representative, isa dyan si Cesar Chavez na ngayon ay nasa Manila City Hall. Meron din yung senior citizens, uh, I do recall interviewing them. Tapos meron ding mga kinatawa na hindi mo malaman pero ang sabi nga eh pandagdag daw yon sa quorum. Dahil yung mga sectoral at yung party list mas madalas umaten kesa dun sa mga regularly elected congressmen na may kanya-kanyang distrito. But from a historical perspective, Ano kaya ang masasabi ni Professor Herman Joseph Kraft sa sistema natin sa Pilipinas? Pudal pa rin ba tayo na yung may pera lamang ang nananaig? Ano kaya ang nasa kasaysayan natin, Professor? Uh, maraming salamat, Melo. Um, uh, in fact, maraming salamat dito sa imbitasyon na magsalita dito. No? Uh, uh, medyo matagal ng panahon since I was asked to put on my history or uh, my, my hat as a historian uh, because I graduated from history in, uh, no, uh, in, in UP. No? And then since then, I've been in political science. No? Um, kaya lang ang isang, uh, the, the point that you're making is actually interesting. No? Uh, pa parang uh, talaga bang uh, parte na ng ating uh, no, ng political culture natin yung... Uh, uh, yung yung ating uh, pagka, yung, the, the, the way that we actually depend on no uh, the elites no uh, to to provide leadership and all of that um, uh, if we're talking about political dynasties no uh, what is interesting here is that madalas pag tinamay literatura natin sa political science ang sinasabi nila this is something that we actually attribute to the 
to the you know um, uh, to the colonial period, right? So we go back to the Americans and the Spaniards, no. But one could actually also make the, the 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 argument that it goes further than that. You talked about the feudal system, right? Um, mm. Noong pre-colonial ano natin, no. Whatever we know about it, no. It was a feudal system that was actually in place or some form of it, no. Uh, that had patronage, no, uh, and and uh, uh, clientelism in term in terms of yung relationship between yung mga local leaders mo no at saka yung mga tao no so nung dumating yung mga Kastila no basically they made use of that particular uh, existing uh, system working through a layer of uh, political elites no um through whom uh, 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 the people were actually uh, uh, subjected no to to colonial rule Um, the United States, uh, when they took over uh, the colonial system, no, just did the same thing. No, so pa, mm-hmm. parang ang ano natin dito is that um, uh, yung yung mga local ano mo, local leaders mo, no, um, were the ones through which uh, became a layer, no, through which the national government, no, which was colonial in nature, no, basically um, uh, sub, uh, 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 asserted the rule, no. So anong ibig sabihin noon? Ang ang ano what what's actually fascinating here is the notion that in fact what we talk about as political dynasties what we talk about as uh, uh, as family politics no um historically speaking it's actually local in nature right this is not something mm-hmm. that we actually see at the national uh, para kumbaga we don't associate, associate this at the national level actually it's quite It's quite fascinating that this. It was only recently that you had President Duterte, for instance, asserting that our our politics since ano, since the end of uh, uh, martial law, no, was between the Aquinos and the Marcoses, right? Parang may sinabi siya to that to that effect, no, uh, um, reducing national politics, no, basically to family politics between uh, contending ano, families, no, which is of course I think and. At the very least, an over exaggeration of that, no, no. Uh, but the point is, the question that you're asking is about the, the the importance or the significance, no, the influence of um, family politics of dynastic politics in the Philippines. And ang 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 ano ko dito is that pag tinignan mo yung ating kasaysayan, no, yung yung um yung nature ng family or ng dynastic politics atin is actually local. Kaya kung titingnan mo, whenever we make we make comparisons no across congresses across elections no yung sinasabi natin na paulit-ulit na lang yung mga pangalan yung paulit-ulit na mga pangalan yun, actually makita natin no prevalent siya at the local level right so in other words no uh, ang, ang ano natin dito is pag tinignan natin yan, um the, the the dynastic politics that we are uh, making reference to no in most of the things that we're talking about no is actually something that exists operationally no at the local level so bakit sa bakit bakit importante yung punto na yun kasi dapat ang tumatapat diyan and and, and and i go back to what uh, representative zarate was actually congressman zarate was actually saying earlier on no yung pagiging ano yung pagiging second class citizen ng ano ng uh, uh, party list uh, ng party list ano kasi ang inaasahan natin na yung local leaders mo yung local politicians mo they're supposed to be the ones that will actually Uh, be responsible for uh, looking out for the welfare of the people in their jurisdictions, right? Um, so, mm-hmm. yung uh, sa, sa madaling sabi, uh, yung uh, 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 yung participation nila dapat sa mga national political parties, no? Uh, parang would be the connection between local at saka yung national politics mo. National resources, no, going down to the local would be um, uh, funneled through yung mga political parties mo no and then of course mga local representatives local officials mo so may connection between dynasties yung local politicians mo political parties supposedly yung uh, regular political in district na ano natin representatives natin at saka yung political parties natin no at saka yung national politics parang yan dapat ang ang pinupuntahan niyan but obviously over over uh, the decades no Um, parang kung tatanungin natin yung ano natin what is the major issue that we should uh, that we attribute uh, uh, or we look forward to our leaders ad- addressing it's poverty right parang mm-hmm. yung, pag tinignan mo ang poverty people like former uh, NEDA secretary general RC Balisacan has already said in, in when when wearing his academic hat asan ang poverty natin asan yung major uh, areas of poverty natin it's actually in the rural areas 
no? Okay. We might actually emphasize urban poverty and so on, pero it's in the rural area. So, ano ibig sabihin nun? Um, our district, ano, our district representatives, no, have not been very effective in trying to actually provide for the needs of people. Okay. That, 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 that then paved the way for what uh, Congressman Zarate was saying. Na, bakit kailangan natin ng uh, uh, ng party list system? Because they're supposed to address no yung mga sectoral needs, no the things that your district representatives were not able to to do. So para historical yan. No patang titingin natin. There are historical links that go back to okay. no uh, the colonial state, for instance. Okay, Professor, I leave this question for you. Uh, is it also possible that these district politicians, this Fuera de los Buenos, as they say, would prefer to keep the people poor so that come election time, a measly 1,000 pesos would suffice? You answer that a bit later, okay? Okay, sure. But, 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 if I recall, there's the fat and the slim dynasty, mm. but dynasties just the same. Attorney Yusinko, please. Um, let me begin, Melo, with good morning to everyone in this uh, webinar and also my thanks to you and the PPI for this opportunity to speak in this round table. Um, just, just, just as a, a brief review of why we have the party list system. So the party list system, if you just review the records of the Constitutional Commission of 1986, it's fundamentally designed to act as a counterforce against traditional politics, which at that time uh, was still the three Gs, you know, guns, goons, and gold. No? And the framers most likely were aware that this traditional way of doing politics will still persist uh, post uh, the uh, post nineteen eighty six, specifically in the way you elect Congress or members to Congress. So that's why they they put the party list system as a, probably as a hope that uh, there will the part the part political party politics will evolve from that and eventually replace traditional politics. So, kaya nandun yun, uh, because they were hoping that eventually political parties will become the norm in our politics, in the way we do business in, in Congress. And uh, the, the, prob the problem is, yung party list system <laughs> fail to do that uh, for uh, specific reasons, no? And now it has been invaded by political dynasties. So to just just to take off from what Congressman Zarati said, no. So it's good that political uh, party lists are now flexing their muscles in in the House of Reps. So they are not no longer what he calls uh, token uh, mm -hmm. representatives, right? But the problem is, uh, the reason probably why they are active now in, in Congress is because majority of the nominees belong to uh, dynastic uh, families or allies of dynastic families. And that's a problem because as our studies uh, show, uh, as, uh, as of 2019, 67 percent of uh, Congress come from dynastic families. And you have to read that, Melo, with the other figures that 80% of governors uh, belong to fat dynasties and 53% of mayors belong to fat dynasties. That means those 67% of uh, members of Congress that belong to fat dynasties as well, most likely meron silang kaalyado or kasamang dynasty at the local level, which is confirmed by what uh, Professor Kraft just mentioned. And that's very dangerous because that kind of dynamics, Melo, is what forms what we know as the pork barrel syndicate. No? Yung, yung connection ng Congress to local executives, whether be it uh, uh, as dynasties, as members of dynasties, 
or as allies. This is what actually what uh, uh, forms the basis of pork barrel uh, politics. So that's that's what's dangerous now. That uh, party lists are also part of that dynamics. Instead of being a counterforce to that dynamics, they've now become part of that uh, uh, dynamic. So yun yung perspective namin sa Ateneo that why we should be reforming the party list uh, system. Because instead of uh, fulfilling their constitutional purpose of being really uh, the instigators of polit genuine political party politics, they've become uh, a victim of uh, patronage politics and political dynasty uh, dynamics. Uh, Attorney Mike, uh, just a very short question. Uh, politics is that art and science of building alliances, right? Correct. Yeah, right. Yes, Alliance. and also mobilizing uh, the community uh, to uh, compete for political power. Okay, but the problem is when this alliance gets to be a cabal, it's yeah. different, right? Yes. Uh, I think I know where you're getting at there, Melo. <laughs> so what's happening now is that uh, meron ng parang select, select uh, segment of our society that holds political power. And these are the political dynasties. That's why that's why uh, yung dynamics natin at the House of Representatives and with due respect to uh, Congressman, Z Congressman Zarati here, uh, it's now being controlled by, well, political elites, right? Political elites that uh, only want to get into power and keep power for themselves. Uh, and that that is uh, counterproductive to really... Uh, instituting the reforms that we need. So yun po ang problema ng being a hostage to political dynasties at the very institution that we need uh, to institute, institute reforms. Okay. Uh, magandang punto yan. I, I cannot disagree with that. Uh, maganda talaga yan. Uh, we have uh, Dr. Chester Cabalza from an anthropological point of view. Nabanggit kasi ni Professor Kraft na Bago pa dumating yung Kastila, feudal na tayo eh. Kaya lang, uh, ano yung sense of justice noon sa sense of justice today? Uh, ano ba yung anthropological views natin? Welcome uh -huh. to the discussions, Dr. Chester Cabalsa. Thank you very much, uh, Sir Medo, for, for inviting me again and uh, to our uh, fellow uh, panelists no? uh, at sa lahat ng nakikinig at nanonood sa atin. Uh, first, I would like to problematize that no? uh, that uh, kind of discourse about the political culture in the Philippines. Because basically, when we talk about uh, political dynasty in our country, may tatlo akong konsepto na naiisip. One is the electoral politics that focuses on the political dynasty. Yun na nga yung pinag-uusapan natin. We have the party list. Uh, and that aims to uh, represent the marginalized that, of course, no, uh, evolved from the notion that na we have a problem on the uh, feudal politics. That did we know that this is actually um, a form of the hegemony of a feudal politics. No, we have mga elites na very selfish and greedy and they are entrenched, no? they are they felt that they are entitled. Kaya ang ganda ng tanong mo kanina po na bakit uh, haayaan na lang ba natin na magkaroon ng mga mahihirap at uh, yung mga mayayaman na lang ng mga uh, elites, political elites will just control us. No? That has become a problem also in the Philippines. Secondly, we also ask the question on political participation. Right now, uh, majority of the voters, Filipino voters, are millennials and from the Generation Z. At itong mga itong voters na ito, hindi nila naiintindihan masyado ang party list system natin. Uh, sinasabi nila na we represent, party list uh, system represents people or their advocacies. Pero we saw from this, uh, based from the recent election, ang taas kasi ng registration natin last year, uh, last midterm elections, na nagmanifest sa pagboto ng mga uh, politicians natin. But we saw also the culture of apathy. 
nagkaroon ng backlash ngayon sa political system natin. Kasi itong mga millennial voters natin, masyadong magagaling. And they ask a lot of questions. Even the, uh, the, even the qualifications of our politicians, they question it. Sabi nila, nag-aaral kami ng mabuti, uh, graduate kami, tapos itong mga iboboto namin, wala namang mga college degree o kung hindi, kung ano-ano lang naman ang nare-represent nilang mga uh, parties and advocacies. So that has become a problem also. And lastly, I want to ask also the political context. Uh, because basically, nagbago yung landscape sa pagboto natin. Right now, of course, we have the political uh, um, party, uh, party system in the Philippines. But we still have that issue of political dynasty. Walang nagbago. Kwento pa rin ito ng Pilipinas kung saan yung majority ng mga mayayaman sa atin, panahon pa ng Kastila hanggang ngayon, sila pa rin yung mayayaman. Ganon din yung politika sa Pilipinas. Kung sino yung mga namuno noong sinaunang panahon sa Pilipinas, sila pa rin yung namumuno up, up to now. So the question is, walang bago. Kung may bago, sisiraan. So that has become a problem. When in fact, majority of those voting for them represent the young population at hindi lumalabas yung mga young politicians doon sa party list na ito. And that has become a problem. So nagkaroon ng backlash doon sa political context natin. And uh, also, I would also like to ask yung ano yung uh, of course no, uh, in the past you have the traditional uh, na kwento na rin kanina yung uh, 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 guns, uh, guns and gold. But I think ngayon ang magiging problema natin yung pang-apat bleach. Kasi there is a proposition now that magiging uh, virtual or uh, uh, um, electronic yung ating voting. And that would become a big problem issue later on uh, uh, basically because of this. Kung ang problem natin is re misrepresentation, another problem would be uh, accessibility of uh, the internet later on that would uh, propel our voters to, to use that as a platform and means. So I think that has become a problem also why this. And think, I think the problem there is in our political culture. There is something wrong with it and we have to correct it. Yeah. Okay. Uh, you know, it puzzles me a lot when somebody just dances on stage and says nothing and still wins a seat at the Senate. Uh, how, anong scientific explanation natin ito, Professor Kraft, bago ko balikan si Kakaloy? Uh, <laughs> Paki-unmute lang po. Yeah. Paki-unmute lang. Yan. Okay. Uh, yeah. uh, nako. Uh, ano, anong, anong tawag natin dyan sa mga religyoso? That's a mystery, really. Uh, in, in, in the sense that when we actually talk about the idea of um, uh, why is it that people keep on voting for the same? You know, uh, I mean, voters keep on 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 uh, electing the same names, the same uh, candidates. No, even if uh, uh, they don't uh, uh, tell us what it is that they plan to do once they're actually sitting. No, um, and to a large extent, uh, I think the question, and, and this is related to your question earlier on. No, na parang yung mga uh, traditional politician ba natin, hindi, hindi ba nasa interest nila na, na i-maintain yung status quo, no? Di ba? Uh, para mas madaling bilhin ng mga boto, no? Mas madaling um, uh, makuha yung piliti ng mga tao kasi napakababa ng expectations, di ba? Parang ganun ang nangyayari, mm -hmm. no? Um, meron ganong klaseng, ano? Uh, uh, may ganong klaseng interest. But, but, but I, I find it interesting, no? Y yung ganong klaseng uh, hypothesis kasi it's 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 counterintuitive doon sa literatura na nakikita natin about politics no wherein the expectation is that um uh, in the in 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 electoral ano, systems no the, the idea is that um people will vote for those who have performed right so yung idea ng performance legitimacy no na, na, na pipiliin natin yung mga tao who have actually done something no na kaya sila yung bubutuhin natin and dito parang ang pinag-uusapan natin ay um and in a sense it's, it's a confirmation of, of of the way that politics is conducted in the Philippines na sa atin ang politika ay during yung election period lang no in between no it's really the elites uh, lording it over us no but but during elections right that's when people actually can vote and unfortunately no yung elections yung campaigns no this has become very ceremonial in the way that we actually conduct our politics. No? Kaya parang ang ano ngayon dyan ay kahit sumayaw ka lang, wala kang sasabihin, 
basta makuha ng mga tao yung expectation nila no kung ano yung ibibigay mo sa kanila so parang nagiging ceremonial siya in, in terms also of what it is that people are actually expecting to get out of mm-hmm. that particular ano event no kampanya so ibig sabihin nun, bibili yung boto no and so on um so this is really the way things have been going on no uh, and and to a certain extent um i don't really like yung idea uh, of 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 affirming or talking about the idea of a um uh, of a damage culture no kaya lang parang ito yung nangyayari ngayon doon sa ano natin the way that we've actually conducted our politics no um is that people and voters become part of it only during no the election period no after that biglang nawawala yung ano nila nawawala yeah. sila um and i i think um ang ano ngayon dito ay paano ka magkakaroon ng mas um uh, 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 ng 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 grupo ng mga tao na galit no na magagalit dahil hindi yung kumbaga they've been ignored their needs are actually mm-hmm. not being ano addressed ano um over the long term parang um that has to happen eh. kailangan magkaroon ng ganung klasing uh, uh, bugso ng damdamin ng mga ng, ng mga da- ng mga tao no uh, para magkaroon ka ng mapilitan yung elites natin to recognize no yung uh, uh, yung kakulangan sa mga ginagawa nila okay. uh, ako yun, yun yung sa aking ano and I'm, I'm not saying na lahat naman ng pulit ng ng ating mga local ano are are using the same uh, paradigm no some are performing some are doing well right uh-huh. um, the problem is dapat may 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 spill over effect yon in terms of expectations ng mga tao nakikita ni ni ano ni, uh, parang 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 yung isang ano natin na uh, yung mga na, na nagseselos uh, sa Pasig dahil si Biko ay kung uh, parang kumbaga successful siya sa kanya mga programa no inaasahan na, na ganun din gagawin ng mayor nila ganung klasing Gano dapat may ganung klasing pakiramdam ng mga tao so that they can actually force yung ano but the question is does that translate into later on being able to vote out your mayor because you feel na hindi siya hindi siya nagperform di ba uh, uh-huh. that goes across yung ano natin um again no uh, that that means na kailangan magkaroon ka talaga ng ng ano eh uh ng sense of discomfort about the way things are actually going Mag-professor, on. Mag professor, may mga survey na ginagawa, may mga tinatanong uh, tungkol sa rallies. Iboboto mo ba 'yan? Ang sagot, "Oo, oh, bakit? Guwapo po siya." Oo. Oh, oh. Yung yeah. bang looks eh sapat na passport para maging magaling na mambabatas kahit pa sinasabing magnanakaw 'yan. Hindi dapat, 'di ba? Kaya lang parang yun nga, eh, para yung expectations napakababa na nung pinag-aanuhan natin eh. So, we keep on talking uh, uh, in fact parang um, the different German foundations for instance, no? Um uh, they support programs, researches no, that look into voter education for instance. Uh-huh. Right? Pero parang uh, what is frustrating is ilang ilang programa na yun nakita natin na may ganyang classing thrust. Ano yung epekto nila? No, it seems like um uh, uh both voter education is something that has to be a continuing thing no and okay. hindi lang dahil pinand ng Hans Seidel o kaya ng Conrad Adenauer kung, kung, kung sino pa man na ano no but but i think that's that's the thing that that our voters should have to be educated as far as those kinds of things are actually concerned even faith based uh, groups would play a role the, the problem is voter education as far as I know, it's not just before elections. That's right. Oh, oh, okay. oh. So even the Catholic Church failed to do its job. Okay? Uh, anyway, uh, that's another topic. We'll have it <laughs> later. <laughs> Attorney Yusinko, do sa pag-aaral ninyo, merong mga kapitolyo na pag binato mo, chances are, tatamaan ni isa apelido, right? Uh, I recall uh, a press conference hosted by... Uh, uh, friend uh, Secretary Harry Roque in Quezon uh, nasa pagitan niya uh, sa pagitan siya ni Congresswoman Suarez at ni Governor Suarez na sabi ni Harry Roque and it's still there on YouTube uh, welcome to the Suarez province ay sabi niya Quezon province no uh, whether it's a slip of the tongue it is reality what makes this political families last uh, pamilya sa politika politika sa pamilya 
O kung babalikan natin yung project ni Imelda, may pera sa basura, may pera ba sa politika? Attorney Mike. For sure, meron pera sa politika. I mean, that's just uh, a fact of life in, in, in our country. And one reason why that is a reality is because our politicians, particularly local politicians, eventually they will also control the local economy. So part, part of our studies, we've, we found out that many of the local businesses, mga gas stations, yung Jollibee franchises, and all of that, eventually they will belong to the, the ruling dynasty. So uh -huh. that's the, probably one reason why we have uh, long, di long existing dynasties or wide-reaching wide dynasties is because they also control the local economy. So when you control the local economy, that means you have power over local employment, right? So kaya yung pat that reinforces now the patronage relationship that hindi na lang siya about politics or about elections. It, it now becomes about uh, economics. Okay. So it, it exacerbates the problem. And... Uh, Yung, it also weakens the ability of reform-minded alternatives you know, to put up a decent fight against uh, existing or uh, pervading dynasties. So, yan, so it, it's a very complex issue. Uh, and uh, kaya magandang pinag-uusapan kasi at least dapat ma-realize ng taong bayan that this patronage relationship this patronage politics is now uh, really uh, uh, pervade, uh, pervading even in the economic uh, sphere. Okay. Uh, Attorney Zwinko, uh, let's go back to the 80s. Noong 1980s, uh, I saw it in Bicol, pag ikaw ay politiko, dapat yung director ng electric cooperative, tao mo. Dapat may hold ka rin sa water district. Okay. Hindi lang tagal, uh, bakit ika kailangan meron kang, meron kang kaila, control sa cooperative? Dahil kung ang negosyo mo, eh, may kinalaman sa poste, kailangan mong makontrol yon. Ngayon, kung bakit tubig, abay, para meron kang pang PR sa tao. Pero mukhang pinagkakakitaan yun eh. Kaya lang, nakita naman natin. Kahit ngayon, baguhin mo man yung pangalan, Pati yung water districts na encroach na ng mga pamilyang malalaki, no? Without naming names. Pero sabi nung ilan, prime water is one. No? Uh, I don't know. Congressman Kaloy, sa ganitong sitwasyon, sabi kailangan i-reforma. Eh, ang pag -re reforma nasa batas. Eh, kung kayo eh nasa minority, anong batas ang inyong mapapanday? Kasama na natin si Congressman Ron Salo. Uh, after your thoughts, si Congressman Ron Salo naman tatanungin natin. Yes, please. Yes, uh, yes, Melo, tama ka. No? Uh, I certainly agree doon sa mga uh, sinabi ng ating mga kasamahan no? uh, earlier uh, sa nature no? ng ating uh, politika. No? Talaga namang uh, mula noon hanggang ngayon, yung ano pa rin, eh, sistema ng patronage. No? Kaya hindi nawawala talaga yung control ng mga dinastiya at dahil yun ang uh, talagang uh, katangian ng ating politika. Yung may padron. Padron na nagmumula sa Malacanang hanggang padron na uh, nasa City Hall o sa munisipyo. No? At tuloy-tuloy uh, yan, uh, nakukontrol nila ang uh, uh, mga ekonomiya. At uh, syempre, kung kontrolado mo ang politika, kontrolado mo yung ekonomiya and vice versa. So, yun talaga ang siguro. Kaya kami, kahit na nasa loob tayo ng uh, kongresong ngayon, ay... Uh, wala kaming ilusyon na talagang uh, um, um, lahat na pagbabago ay nasa loob lang ng, uh, ng uh, kongreso. No? Kailangan talaga, kami naniniwala, palakasin din yung uh, uh, boses ng mamamayan uh, sa labas. No? Uh, tama yung tinurang kanina. Kung mag-voters education tayo na 60 days or 90 days before the election, it will wala not Mm, wala yan. Wala yan. Kailangan tuloy-tuloy. No? Tuloy-tuloy. It's a painstaking uh, effort but kailangan tuloy-tuloy. No? Dahil kami naniniwala merong uh, nakikitang unti-unting uh, pagbabago sa ating mamamayan. But in terms of legislation, uh, I'll go directly to sa tanong mo, Melo. Tama. Pero kahit magsama-sama pa, granting, no? Uh, 
na magsama-sama yung 20% na party list at sabihin mo pare-pareho ang pag-iisip nila at politika nila, uh, hindi pa rin sila mananalo talaga sa Kongreso. Uh, dahil 20% lang sila. 80%, 80% ay kontrolado ng mga, uh, sabi ni uh, Panyero Michael kanina, ngayon ay nasa 67%. No? Ang Congress ay nagmumula sa mga dinastiya. Mm-hmm. But nandalas, no? nandalas Melo, uh, kailangan isa itong arena na kailangan itulak mo yung reforma at para makita rin ng mga tao na kailangan talaga yung pagbabago no kaya uh, in the 17 uh, i think in the 16th congress 17th congress naghain kami ng panukalang batas na i-reform itong party list system no and in fact uh, uh, July this year uh, last 2019 no naghain na rin tayo ng panukalang batas house bill number 242 Uh, for to reform no uh, the uh, to amend the current uh, party list law uh, unfortunately uh, natutulog yun sa committee on suffrage no uh, siguro ang pinakamalayong naabot ng aming efforts no from uh, in, together with other party list groups no uh, in, i think in the 16th congress na mayroong naipasang a mandatory bill uh, from the committee dumating siya sa plenary but that's it no hanggang plenary lang siya Uh, yeah. uh, through with uh, our uh, bill to uh, define what is political dynasty no uh, ang pinakamalayong naabot nito kahit na nasa constitution pa yan was in the 16th congress also na umabot siya sa floor it was sponsored uh, in, fact, in fact nagkaroon ng dalawang nag-interpellate na and that's it no hindi na rin siya pumasa so uh, but uh, be that as it may no sabi ko nga kailangan tuloy-tuloy lang natin itong mga adbokasiyang ito pa rin no Uh, sa loob at labas ng kongreso. Uh, mm-hmm. Isang example ko sa ilo, college pa lang tayo, uh, kami, no? pinalanawagan na namin na sa yung edukasyon, hanggang college, dapat free yan. Sabi nila, mm-hmm. sunod buwan yan dito sa kongreso. But eventually, kahit na hindi naman talaga ganun ka, uh, ano pa siya, we already have a free tertiary education now. No? Dahil sa ating pag-tulak din, sa public and uh, uh, colleges and universities. No? And for example, another one, yung uh, Free Irrigation Service Act. No? Uh, dati, sabi nila, imposible yan na maging libre yung mga irigasyon. But uh, we argued na bakit ang Pilipinas lang na agricultural country, nagbabayad ng irigasyon yung mga magsasaka. Sabantalang ang mga kapitbahay natin, libre yan. Although mm-hmm. now, there is that kind of law. But these are far in between victories. No? Na kailangan pa rin talagang uh, uh, pagsikapan na magkaroon ng Uh, ano ito uh, malakihang uh, mang, uh, pagbabago no gaya nga ng nasabi kanina ni uh, uh, Panyero Michael uh, yung real objective for supposedly ng party list is maging counter force siya no uh, mm-hmm. traditional politics but unfortunately no sabi ko nga uh, kanina it's now being hijacked no? uh, sabi kanina na hostage ito So it's really a challenge. No? It's really a challenge, na, especially now that there are moves to even abolish the party system. Oh, yeah, so, I heard that. I heard that. <laughs> oh, I heard that. Uh, so so uh, that has uh, made you an endangered species. Ganon. Yes. Uh, so mas lalong, ano, uh, mas lalong yung uh, intent ng uh, ating mga framers of the Constitution na mabigyan, no? kahit na token na lang na boses, uh, para... Uh, yung democratization of our politics will start to roll ay sinasara sinasara mo yung uh, puwang na yon no kaya challenge yan hindi lang sa amin kundi challenge din sa lahat ng mga mamamayan at re- all reform minded uh, citizens in our country no especially mm-hmm. in the present context that of our politics that uh, we are in now uh, Melo. yeah i i do recall uh, then speaker monching mitra gave me a book it's entitled power play sabi do sa libro ito ay ang setting sa Amerika na pag meron kang ipinanukalang batas, maganda yan. Pero pag yan ay naipasa, hindi mo na makikilala. Sa dami ng amendments, sa dami ng revisions, gawa ng mga influence peddlers or ano ba, lobbyists. <laughs> At the same time, ng mga interes ng mga kinakatawa ng mga mambabatas. Uh, Congressman Ron Salo, welcome to the discussions. It's nice to see you. Uh, may binabanggit na kailangan magkaroon ng reforma sa party list at doon din sa dynasties. What's your personal take on this? And what is the, uh, uh, Kabayan's take on these issues? Magandang umaga, Melo. Magandang umaga rin po sa mga kasamaan po natin kasama si Rep. Caloy. 
una siguro magpapasalamat ako sa proseso po at sa dito sa itinatawag po natin na party list dahil ang isang katulad ko po ay definitely hindi po makakapasok ng kongreso kung hindi dahil po sa party list. Ang isang pangalang salo ay doubt kung makakabot po yan kahit na konsihal ng bayan. Subalit so, dahil dito sa <laughs> dahil dito po o kahit barangay captain most likely hindi po ako papasa. Wala po akong kakayanan na mag-lodge at uh, mangampanya ng individual na tao at bibigyan po sila para makakuha po ng posisyon. So bait nagpapasalamat po tayo sapagkat may ganitong pagkakataon na katulad kong isang uh, ordinaryong tao uh, so balit may marubdob na advokasya na pinaglaban para sa bayan ay magkakaroon po ng boses po sa Kongreso. So yes, uh, ano, uh, nakikita po natin yung mga tawag po natin na sinasabi po ninyo na Uh, lumalabas na hinaka-hijack dahil pumapasok po yung mga political families dito sa uh, party list system. But at the same time, I doubt uh, if this is sufficient enough para i-push naman po ng mga ibang mga tao na buwagin po yung party list system. When in fact, what is exactly needed is to strengthen it para bigyan po ng poder, bigyan po ng boses, bigyan po ng higit na pagkakataon yung mga katulad po natin na hindi po pwede na maka Uh, sale sa politika dahil hindi po tayo galing sa isang political na pamilya. Subalit, ang meron lang po tayo ay isang pagnanais na makatulong para sa pagpapanday ng mga pulisiya, pagpapanday ng mga batas na higit na makabubuti para sa uh, lahat ng mga Pilipino. Isa siguro, Melo, na babanggitin po natin, uh, sapagkat hindi naman po ito masyadong alam ng karamihan sa mga kabayan po natin, yung universal health care na sikat na sikat na pinag-uusapan po natin, sapagkat at the end of the day, lahat ng mga ng Pilipino ay covered dahil dito, ito po ay advocacy primarily ng kabayan party list. So, tayo, iisa man po tayo doon, isang boses lang po tayo among 300 people individuals. And isang sangay lang po yun dahil House of Representatives, mayroon ka pang uh, Senado. Then later on, mayroon ka rin pong uh, presidente na siyang pipirma po nun. So balit, ang focus po ng Kabayan Party list sa amin, uh, hindi po yung hanapin po yung arena na hindi mo kakayanin. Kundi dito sa isang punto na pagkakataon, hinahanap po natin kung ano yung mga pulisya na pwede po nating susugan na makabubuti at makagaganda talaga sa bayan po natin. Yan, mag- maganda yung binabanggit ninyo. Pero mukhang endangered species na rin kayo dahilan sa, you know, may mga party lists na nawawala. Maganda yung adhikain pero nawawala. Pero mayroon mga party list na hindi mo naman alam kung saan ang pinagmulan pero maraming mga sumusuporta. Hindi kaya merong, ano ba, Professor Kraft, sabi niyo, merong misteryo? O yun eh, hiwaga ba? O yun ba eh, milagro? Uh, Professor Kraft. <laughs> ah, ano nga eh, mi- misteryoso nga eh. Uh, pero ang, ang ano kasi diyan, kung, kung kung iisipin natin, no? Um yung 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 sistema kasi sa party list is is actually interesting. Uh, kung kung ako ay traditional politician, no? At meron akong party list na mukhang uh, isang isang uh, base na pwede kong ipag ipatupad yung uh, pa, yung yung continu- yung continuity ng aking ano no termino. Um, mas may limitasyon ka kasi kung ikaw ay district representative eh. Pero kan term limits doon eh. No, pero pagdating sa party list kasi, no, um, as long as nakakakuha ng boto ng 2% yung party list mo, no, maaaring ikaw pa rin yung nakaupo doon. So, mas may impluwensya ka kung sakasakali na tumatakbo ka bilang party list, ano? Um, pero Uh, itong mga bagay na ito talagang um, kon- konektado yan talaga do sa nature ng ng politika natin eh, na kung saan ang ang pinaka uh, uh, masasabi natin ay hindi institutionalized kasi ang mga sistema no so parang ang ang ano talaga ay yung personalities that are actually involved are the ones that are uh, that make a ano that make a uh, 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 an impact no on on the choices made by people no so yung 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 personalistic na nature kasi ng politics natin makes it very difficult no uh, kung babalikan natin yung tanong na marereforma ba natin yung mga bagay na yan no um, kaya ba natin pa, pa paigtingin pa yung yung kapasidad ng mga party list natin no na maimpluwensyahan yung uh, uh, yung klase ng mga issues na pwedeng itulak nila no 
Um, pwede hypothetically, pero ang babalikan natin ay yung sinasabi ni Congressman, uh, yung, yung tanong ko kanina kay Congressman Zarate na parang who will guide you know, guide us from the guidelines. Kasi ang, 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 ang gagawa ng reforma ay magmumula doon sa batas. No? Mm-hmm. Ito, ang mga ang mga gagawa ng batas na yon ay yung maapektuhan no uh, negatively nito ng ano ng mga batas na ito medyo mahirap natin isipin na uh, na na uh, palalakasin natin yung o mapapalakas natin yung party list system pero eto rin yung isang punto ko hindi ko masyado nakikita na may interest yung ating mga political elites right now no kahit na sinabi ni presidente Duterte na tanggalin natin yan no that it is something na ano kasi nakikinabang sila eh doon sa existing party list system eh pwedeng nga gamitin nila yan na alternative doon sa district representation na uh, uh, nila eh tapos na yung termo ni ko dito hindi pa tapos sa party list di ba pwedeng nilang gawin yan eh so parang from that perspective the other side of it kasi sabi natin mahirap ireforma pero mahirap din siyang tanggalin kung sakali kasi uh, ano siya eh, uh, isa, isa, siyang, isa siyang bagay na kung, kung saan nakikinab, maaari makinabang yung ating mga traditional na politicians din. Yeah. Uh, Dr. Hello? Chapalza. Uh, Hello? Yes. Pwede yes. nang sumingit lang po. Magka-clarify lang po ako. Uh, sinususugan po natin lahat po ng sinabi po ni Professor Kraft. Except, uh, ka-clarify lang po natin na kahit sa party list po, yung three-term limit rule, nag-apply po sa mga nag-apply pa rin. Uh-huh. Yeah, tama. Uh-huh. Dahil kung di ako nagkakamali, eh, sabi ni Satur Ocampo, tapos na ako, nakatatlong terms na ako. Pero pwede naman siguro yung may bahay o yung kapatid. Natatawa nga ako. Mayroon mga sektor na hindi ko alam kung paano nangyari. Pero may party list. Pero uh, let me ask you, Dr. Cabalza, ito bang frustration ng tao? Kung yung kanilang layunin eh, hindi maghahari, kung yung bang serbisyo ng gobyerno eh, nakikitang wanting, so to speak, ito ba ay sapat para mag-trigger ng pag-aaklas? You know, from a security uh, yes, point of view. Yes, yeah. yung katanungan, no? because basically ngayon nakikita rin natin na uh, the voting population has seen this uh, ano, no, uh, a kind of resistance also. Dahil unang-una, uh, kung titignan natin yung uh, electoral process natin, may tatlo tayong nakikitang three piece dito. One is, it's still a popularity contest. Kung sinong sikat. No? Basically, alam naman natin yan. No? O kaya, even if you, ha, you are a popular uh, in uh, mainstream media, kailangan mo rin maging popular. Lalo-lalo na ngayon, ang gamit natin, social media, yung no media. No? Uh, vis-a-vis, yung iba naman, very popular sa social media, pero hindi nagta-translate doon sa traditional media. So, kaila combine pa rin. Kaya second din meron pa rin yung blessing coming from the ano uh, political party. Kaya nga itong uh, nag-aalala yung mga party list natin ngayon na uh, dahil na uh, may blessing yung uh, dominant uh, party list uh, pa political, political parties natin, uh, nagtataka tayo bakit sino-sino na lang yung nakakapasok kayo dito sa kongreso natin, no? Uh, and uh, even the quali- uh, qualifications is a uh, questionable also. And uh, thirdly, uh, it's all about power. No? Kaya nga yung katanungan yung kanina, Sir Melon, na what if it doesn't translate dun sa mga pinangako nila, promises nila? Basically, because uh, that's how the system works. No? There is a problem in the electoral uh, process. So we need some reforms. Kaso nga lang, pag nag-reform tayo, apektado rin yung mga mambabatas natin. Because basically, uh, it would affect. No? Kasi kanina ang proposition natin na ang, uh, ang uh, politics is also a business. No? Also because basically that's how families would want to uh, propagate and prolong their stay in power because basically it redounds their interests and benefits. Kaya gusto nila na sila-sila rin lang. Kaya nakita natin nagkaroon ng mga political elites na for the longest time, uh, ayon sinasarado nila they 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 gated the 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 the, the, the gates or the doors for new no, for new no politicians kaya nga kahit na yung mga promises nila hindi na natutugunan o hindi nila na, na natutupad natutupad napapako eh they will do their best no by hook or by crook to stay in power because it redounds to their, to their interest and okay. that is the Philippine politics that we know yun ang masakla. Pero, uh, Attorney Cinco, uh, if you notice, let's uh, go back to 2015. Uh, si Pangulong Duterte won. 
all right, 2016. Pero nung 2015, he started building alliances with political dynasties who wield influence in the regions. Like, pag-aliado siya sa mga Marcos, sinabi niya na magaling si Bongbong Marcos, kaharap si Alan Peter Cayetano, pero okay lang. Uh, don't you think malaki ang papel ng political dynasties sa national elections? For sure, yes. Oh, lalo na in terms of uh, alliance building. No? The, the more dynasties that you're allied with spread out uh, all over the Philippines really increases your chances of winning at the national level. And that's exactly uh, what our national politicians have done, even from the time of uh, colonial times. And in fact, uh, lumalabas nga that, uh, that kind of patronage relationship between the national and the local, that's one of the gifts of American colonialism to us, di ba? Kasi since sila yung nag-start nung local elections, eh, di ba? So local politicians, uh, they, they found out that in order for them to win, they have to ally themselves to national uh, personalities or national leaders, and then vice versa, no? So that kind of dynamics, yung uh, alliance building between uh, dynasties, regional dynasties or local dynasties, in order for them to win at the national level, that's really a, a, a long traditional way uh, in our politics. So hindi na bago yun. Uh -huh. So again, that's, that's, a, that's, a, that's a pathology that needs to be addressed. Kaya nga uh -huh. yung anti-political dynasty law is not as simple as uh, prohibiting dynasties. No? So there's, there's ka, dapat meron ding uh, parang legislative support in terms of political party development, voter education development. So hindi lang, it's not just a matter of regulating dynasties, yeah. but it's also about empowering the electorate and uh, doing uh, empowering the electorate to conduct uh, genuine political party politics. Yeah, uh, I guess I heard Dr. Cabalza right when he mentioned political parties. But let me ask you, Attorney Yusinko, I'll get on then si, uh, Professor Kraft, anong political parties ang pinag-uusapan mo? Na anybody can form a political party and have it registered and stand for whatever objective na meron. So what political so, parties have we? Actually, we don't have really genuine <laughs> political parties and uh, our constitution is partly to blame for that because our constitution only provides that we, we have an open and free party system that should be allowed to evolve based on the people's choice. No? So it's very vague. And essentially, our constitution essentially uh, gave it to, to Congress to develop a robust and vibrant vibrant political party regime. Eh, again, yung Congress natin is not incentivized to do that because they benefit from the current broken system. No? So, wala tayong political party. So, they won't fix that, it. They won't fix it. <laughs> they won't, wala silang incentive to fix it. So, parang ano yan eh. Uh, we are now in a, between a rock and a hard place because... Uh, <laughs> We want to change our politics, but uh, our political elites are stopping us from doing so. But again, tama si Congressman Zarate kanina, we just have to uh, continue on with the fight, right? And I just like to mention, Melo, na siguro meron tayong uh, silver lining here because of social media, no? Uh, our reform-minded civil society organizations have a chance no, of mustering public discomfort and public disgust and really pressure our uh, lawmakers to inst institute the reforms that we need. But it's not as simple as that. No? They need the sophisticated and really uh, long-term long strategies to do that. So anyway, meron, meron tayong uh, potential to make headway in terms of reform, but again, it's still a challenging uh, uh, way forward. Aha, okay. Pero, uh, Professor Kraft, uh, matagal na ito eh, noong mga 60s, uh, before martial law. I, I do recall, dalawa lang yung partido political. 
Okay. liberal at nasyonalista at merong third force yung uh, People's Progressive Party ni Raul mm-hmm. Banglapos if I recall it right. Yeah. Uh, mm-hmm. Merong mga lugar na kahit malayo yung tindahan hindi bibili ng suka dahil sa liberal yun eh. E nasyonalista ako. Pero nawala yun. Nakatulong ba yung pagkakaroon ng multi-party system sa Pilipinas? Or is it to blame why we have this mess today? Um, kaya mo ba ako tinatanong kasi buhay na ako nung panahon na yun? Yun ba yung uh, nalagdo? Hindi ko naman sinasabing <laughs> implicate nyo sarili nyo. <laughs> From a historical perspective. Yeah. Um, actually, it's partly to blame, right? Kasi parang our our political system, kahit na sabihin natin 87 constitutions, no? Um, a significant part of it was designed uh, with the American Constitution as a model, right? And the American Constitution actually builds on the idea of well, hindi naman specific sa kanya na two-party system siya, no? Kung kung titingnan natin, no? Pero um, the way it has operated, it has uh, the continuity has always been based on dadalawa yung partido na malalakas, may may kakayahan na mamuno, no? Pa, uh, kung bakap kunuin yung Kongreso, uh, kunin ng uh, uh, ang uh, executive no and so on. So kubaga ang ating sistema, pag tinitingnan natin yung constitution natin, no? Um uh, madami siyang mga impluwensya na pinag na pinagkuhanan, no? Uh, kaya lang ang pinaka ano nga dito ay kung gaano natin pwede sabihin na coherent no yung mga impluwensya na yon na pinagsama-sama natin. To a large extent yung uh, um, for instance, balikan natin yung question ng party list system. Right? Ang ano natin ng party list system, pag tinignan natin ng ibang mga bansa, ang party list system nila, it's proportionate representation. Right? TR ang ginagamit nila na sistema para uh, 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 punuin yung, uh, uh, yung mga uh, seats no? para sa, uh, part, sa party list. No? Um, wala silang ano, wala silang uh, uh, wala silang caps no kung ilan yung ilang seats ang pwede makuha ng ano. Depende lang yan sa, sa kung ilan ang inyong uh, boto na mahukuha no tayo iniba natin yung sistema as far as the party list system is concerned right it's it's some form of of, of proportionate na, no? representation kasi inano natin na it's one national district pagkatapos ang ano niyan ay uh, uh, it, it it constitutes 20% of the you know, of the seats in uh, in the house no uh, pero pag tinignan mo siya um unang-una mababa yung yung ano mababa yung floor mo no para makakuha ka ng seat sa ano sa party list system 2% lang ng ng votes uh, cast no during a particular election for party list may seat ka na isa yon mm-hmm. but at the same time regardless of how many you know regardless of how many votes you actually get you only get a maximum of 3 seats right so parang kubaga meron tayong uh, it yata yung sinasabi ni na Congressman Salo at ni Congressman Serati kanina na parang um inayos natin yung party list system in a way no that that fits the kind of politics that we have no so so parang pag tinignan natin yung anong yon uh, part of the problem is really uh, uh, um, uh, the, the the kind of uh, uh, cherry picking that we did as far as yung ano as far as the constitution is concerned no parang siguro sa sa mga sa mga framers niya na intindihan nako ano yung gusto nilang mangyari pero kung papansin niyo a number of the things that uh, that needed to be uh, clarified iniwan sa kongreso right parang uh, kailangan magkaroon ng batas para sa sa, sa dynasties kailangan uh, iklaruhin yung ano natin uh, klarihin yung uh, ano ng party list system natin no uh, kaya kinailangan ng batas din na sumunod doon so kubaga the, the constitution itself no um actually uh, uh, provides uh, a system na kung saan the intention could be subverted no by those who are actually in power kasi yung batas in the end ang gagawin pampuno doon sa ano so um kung titingnan lang natin on the babalik ka natin tanong mo kung titingnan natin question na is the multi party system that we have now worse than the two party system that we that we had before no the two party system actually uh, uh, did not give us ideological choices pareho lang naman yung ano nila eh. yung, yung as far as ideology is concerned saka yung mga policies eh. so parang pinaano doon is personalidad din ang pinag-uusapan natin doon sa anong yon no but the advantage of that two party system 
mas may continuity ka as far as the existence of those parties are concerned. You go back to what Michael was saying earlier on, wala naman tayong talagang political parties ngayon. Eh. No? And that mm -hmm. goes back to the idea of ano ba expectation natin sa political parties. Diba? An in important part of it is organization, continuity, and capacity to, uh, capacity to actually compete regularly for for uh, 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 for elections no yung yung liberal tsaka nationalista ganun yung ginagawa nila dati ngayon kung titingnan natin no um, yung pagbabago ng mga partido na uh, uh, mas malalakas ngayon no ang um, mapapansin natin uh, uh, or, and, and it shows just how how inconsistent or um, uh, difficult it is to to talk about uh, the idea of uh, party continuity, so to speak, or at least the dominance of mga uh, ng mga partido. Yeah. No? So, uh, kasama rin siya dun sa ano? Uh, uh, may may kinalaman din yung yung constitution natin dun sa ano yun, no? Uh, and and maybe again, it goes back to the idea of the reforms that need to be instituted. Professor, let me ask you this. Uh, this is a bit controversial because you mentioned um, organization. Isn't it that organization is also synonymous? with machinery right um mm -hmm. yeah um, although, and um, if you're dealing with machinery for the machines to perform well it has to be oiled and the oil is money where right. will the money come from that is the question that's, that's a very good question no uh, and ang ano mo nga dyan is that's where uh, as far as uh, no Money politics, right, is part of the game as far as uh, 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 the Philippines is concerned. And ang ano mo ngayon don is that okay? Um, I'll, I'll go back to the question, right? In tinatanong mo about the idea of organization in the literature when we talk about the organization of political parties. No, ang sinasa ang 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 ibig sabihin nun, it's not necessarily the machinery, right? But the internal organization of the political party itself. No, yeah. leadership, membership. No. Uh, uh, the, the the platform, no, what the, the party stands for. That's what we mean by organization, right? Um, the idea of a machinery now talks about the idea of how the party networks down to the electorate, uh, the electorate, no. Parang ang ano ngayon, sino yung mga connection ng ano? And of course, the more extensive that network is, right? the stronger the party uh, is or at least the, the greater the capability of the party to actually win elections right but having said that it indicates to us na parang para magkaroon ka ng ganun ka extensive na mga network doon papasok na yung resources mo saan manggagaling yung resources na yun no and that's where in the united states for instance as an example right do yung mga yung mga donors doon sa mga political parties yung mga super PACs na gina, na, na uh, that are actually there but but that again goes back to the question of organization right the mm -hmm. more organized the more institutionalized your political party is the more capable you are of actually tapping into potential uh, resources no okay um, sa atin kasi ang nangyayari incumbent when we talk about the idea of incumbency having its advantages Parang sinasabi natin, ad may advantage ka kasi may, may capacity ka to tap into government, uh, into public resources ne, for political purposes, right? But okay. if you have strong organization, hindi necessarily public resources ang, 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 itata ang, ang you don't need to, to depend on public resources. Okay. okay. Um, Mabulupit yun ah. Uh, Attorney Yusinko, coming from Ateneo School of Government, is it really true that once you write something about the government, by the time the book gets out of the printing office, luma na. Nagbago na yung landscape. That, that's also true for uh, laws. No? Once you enact a law, baka outdated na because of how long it takes to, uh, how long the legislative process takes. But uh, uh, I'm not entirely sure of what you're trying to say, Melo. No, no, yung our, the ability of civil society groups like Ateneo, yeah. the, its ability to meet the exigencies of society because of the, how long it takes for it for us to gather our wits and also really to to offer up uh, solutions. But uh, um, that's just uh, how academic institutions work, right? Uh, yeah. Kailangan duman sa tamang proseso. But still, I recognize uh, there's, there's a, a weakness there that maybe 
society or civil society organizations really ha have to speed things up in terms of reacting to the problems of the day, especially uh, given that uh, we're still in a pandemic. No? Yeah. Uh, Dr. Cabalza, dun sa pandemic na binanggit ni Attorney Yusinko, ano nakikita mo mangyayari? Anong pagbabago? Dahil sa maraming mahirap, so baka yung politiko eh, pipilahan ng tao, kaya pagdating ng eleksyon, sila pa rin na mananalo dahil sila may resources. Uh, definitely po, no. Uh, ganun yung magiging... Magi uh, definitely, there should be reforms and actions coming from uh, the Comindex and the... Uh, of course, uh, from the electorate and the politicians, uh, gusto kong gamitin yung whole of nation approach no? or whole of government approach. Kasi hindi dapat manggalin yan sa mga mababatas o namumuno o di halos lahat. No? Uh, uh, recently, I uh, sat in a panel uh, dito sa isang uh, nagtitisis sa uh, Development Academy uh, coming from the COMELEC. Ang kanyang uh, proposition is sila yung pupunta, because of the pandemic right now, sila yung pupunta ngayon sa mga uh, elderly at saka mga, mga, mga millennials para mag-register no uh, that is a good uh, start no uh, uh, instead na sila yung pumupunta uh, yung mga bumboboto ang pumupunta sa COMELEC ngayon baliktad ang COMELEC naman ang pupunta sa mga bahay-bahay but of course there are certain legality and provisions on that no na dapat ayusin ng mga mababatas natin because of the current pandemic now what is the effect of that given that uh, mukhang tatagal pa itong uh, situation natin. One is, of course, no, uh, the openness to, uh, to, uh, to uh, means of uh, electing our uh, politicians. No? And secondly, magmamatter din yan sa campaign. So how do we do the campaign next year kung meron pa rin ganitong lockdown and uh, pandemic? No? Naturally, we will optimize technology here. No? But definitely, because of that, dapat marami na tayong safety measures, particularly on cybersecurity at saka yung mga pandaraya na pwedeng ano. Kaya kanina nabanggit nga yung uh, guns, gold, uh, and uh, guns plus yung leads ngayon because we will be using technology right now. So magiging apat siya na problema natin. No? Uh, and that has become a problem. And the problem in technology is it's no longer about kung dati kasi kaya natin bayaran yung mga, ano, no, yung mga bumuboto. Ngayon yung mga fake news because that is propagating in the cyber domain uh, the projections and misinformation and thirdly ang nakikita rin natin is the inaccessibility because right now not all of us have that access to the internet lalong lalo na yung nasa uh, classes uh, CDE unang una wala silang pambili ng mga smartphones nila and they don't have the, uh, the internet no that has something to be provided by the state and I think uh, those are the challenges that we are seeing right now. We need to move forward and also use technology in the elections because this will uh, help us reform our uh, electorate, no? uh, and, uh, the, the electoral uh, process, uh, basically. Yeah. Also, this is a good, uh, uh, no, this is the fastest way to educate also uh, our voters. Okay. Pero paano yun? Nasaan yung consciousness ng kabataan? Dahil sa, sa ibang bansa, Katulad ng Thailand, katulad ng Burma, kabataan yung humihingi na reforma. Dito makikita mo sa social media kung sino yung artista ang may bagong girlfriend o may bagong boyfriend. Ano ba yun? Sinasadya ba yun para ilayo yung tao sa issue? Sir, may magandang case study tayo. No? Kasi noong 2016, nakita natin yung use of social media. At uh, uh, of course, no, we cannot uh, deny the fact din also na yung ating presidente, ginamit niya uh, in a very creative way itong uh, social media nito. But there was a backlash nung midterm elections. Merong mga uh, nag-participate na mga dating uh, kaalyado ng presidente na hindi nanalo. Like uh, may isang sikat na vlogger. Hindi ko nalang babanggitin yung pangalan niya. Sikat siyang dating artista na sumasayaw-sayaw pero nag-backlash. Hindi siya nanalo. Uh, so I think with that kind of ano of 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 uh, case studies na nakikita natin dito ngayon sa use of technology and social media hindi lahat ng sikat sa social media pwede nang manalo because i think ang voters natin particularly the millennials and generation z uh, may i think uh, walk generation eh marami silang alam eh they can actually persecute you in social media mm -hmm. okay all right congressman ron salo uh, let's look forward 
anong mga batas pa yung nakikita nyo pwedeng gawin? Uh, 20% kayo sa House of Representatives. Uh, is there anything that you can do to create even a dent na merong assurance na may magbabago sa ating sistema? Melo, siguro bago po sagutin yun, uh, allow me to also express my opinion doon sa pinag-uusapan pa kanina pa related po dito sa uh, democratization po ng information. And I completely agree doon sa binabanggit po ni uh, Tony Yusinko at ni Professor Cabalsa. Tatamansinin po natin, there's really a silver lining dito sa binabanggit po natin the rise of the social media. Kasi it has really democratized information. Kasi kung pagdating po sa eleksyon, uh, definitely yung mga binabanggit po natin ng mga may pera, sila rin po ang kadalasan na nakaka-afford na magpa, magpa-advertise. At syempre, kung sino yung naririnig, lalo na kung mainstream media po yan, kilalang uh, media outfit, most likely mataas po yung chance na sila rin po ang mananalo. So other than the fact na may pambili po sila ng boto ng mga tao, sila rin po ang nasa consciousness ng mga tao. Pero with the rise of the social media, uh, there's that silver lining na nadidemokratize yung information. Hindi na uh, hawak lang ito ng mga med- uh, traditional media outfits kundi ito lahat ng tao ngayon na may access po siya sa uh, internet uh, the fact na mayroon po siyang social media account may boses na po siya just like everyone else so it has completely transformed the landscape na nung una ang mananalo lang talaga kung sino yung sikat but it's still it's still a popularity contest nagkaiba nga lang yung uh, system nagkaiba lang po yung platform na ginagamit kung noon popularity contest using the traditional media outfits ngayon uh, po pasok po yung additional yung social media but it's still a popularity contest so yun nga lang dahil lahat ngayon may say lahat ng tao meron po silang uh, pwedeng sabihin po doon so it still it becomes a marketplace of ideas and opinions nung kung sino man po noon so dito po pasok yung binabanggit po natin i suppose uh, na kailangan kailangan natin ma-harness yung uh, powers at the same time yung pwedeng gamit gamit itong teknolohiyang ito na i suppose Marami rin po mga sa CSOs po natin, kagaya mo, Melo, na talagang aktibo rin po. So I suppose kailangan din natin ma-maximize, magamit yung i-offer po nitong bagong teknolohiyang ito para naman mabigyan ng boses at ma-educate yung mga kababayan po natin. Okay. Ngayon naman, pagdating doon sa pagbabago ng sistema, I suppose uh, dito rin po mahalaga talaga yung educator, education na binabanggit po natin ng lahat mga kasama po natin kanina pa. So I suppose, uh, of course, mahalaga na pumasok po ito sa uh, officially, sa dapat pinag-uusapan din po ito part ng curriculum sa ating bansa. Kasi papansin po natin, binabago natin yung curriculum, uh, maraming mga panukala na kailan isama ito, kung ano nung mga sinasama po natin sa curriculum. Pero hindi naman natin pinag-uusapan. Ang isa sa pinakamalaga doon, yung pagiging uh, voter po natin. Sa ang karapatan po natin at kakayanan po natin na pumili at maglagay po ng mga leaders na talaga maglilid sa bansa po natin. Hindi natin napag-uusapan maigi. Ano pa yung mga disiplina kailangan natin instill sa mga kababayan po natin? Pagdating po rin po sa paggamit po sa social media, yung, ginag- yung binabanggit po ni Professor Cabal sa kanina, related po dyan sa uh, mga misinformation, disinformation, o kung ano nung pong mga uh, pamamaraan para si uh, sirain po nila yung maayos na flow ng information sa bawat sa po sa atin. Yeah. So, ito yung mga bagay na kailangan po nating uh, ayusin. And I suppose medyo mahirap po ito dahil kapag pinag-usapan po yung uh, pag-aayos po ng dito sa information, uh, misinformation, disinformation, syempre uh, papasok din po doon sa realidad na part pa rin ito ng freedom of speech ng mga tao. So, it's really about critical thinking. So ang kailangan po talaga nating ma-develop sa mga kabayan po natin is the ability na kailangan nilang tas- tasain ng maigi. Tasain at intindihin ng mas malalim yung mga bagay-bagay. Hindi po pwede na uh, sasabihin po natin, i-outlaw po natin yung misinformation, disinformation. Mas madaling sabihin po yun eh, na ito yung isa sa reform po natin na gagawin po natin. Pero it may actually intrude into something more uh, basic right uh-huh. about sa po sa atin. It's the ability okay. for us to be able to say our peace and speak at our minds. So, ang kailangan po talaga natin dito is to develop that capacity of each and every individual. So, papasok po dito yung uh, panukala po ng batas po ng uh, kabayan party sa Kongreso. It's about the uh, inculcating or 
developing the what we call the three C's paradigm of basic education. Ito yung pag-develop ng uh, critical thinking sa mga bata, sa lahat po ng mag-aaral, the capacity, critical thinking, uh, skills or competency in character. Ang kailangan lang po talaga natin, tatlo lang po talaga yan eh. Paulit-ulit kong sinasabi kung saan man po ako nagpupunta. Ang kailangan ng isang individual at tatlong bagay lang para mag-thrive mag, uh, siya kahit ano man po yung nasaan po siya. It's really about the critical thinking na kailangan ma-develop sa mga tao. It's about competency. Sapagkat ngayon, lahat ng gagawin po natin, it's always skills-based. Pero kailangan mo pa rin ng uh, critical thinking para dun sa competency mo ay mas ma-develop mo pa yun. At the same time, it's your character. Lahat, all other else, magbabago po yan kung ano yung kailangan competency na i-develop. But what we need are those basics in order for you to be able to, parang yung nanotechnology, di ba? Ang kailangan mo lang talaga yung that particular, no, o yung stem cell na konsepto, di ba? Ang kailangan uh-huh. mo lang yung precursor eh. Ang kailangan lang ng bawat Pilipino talaga is to develop those three things. And kahit saan man sila pupunta, ang mahalaga, nandun na po yun, nakatanim po yun. And kaya nilang tasain ngayon, i-identify exactly ano ba yung tama at mali. Okay. Lalo na pagdating po sa information. Very good. Uh, Kakaloy, uh, yung bayan muna, may, meron kayong tatlong seats. I'd like to attribute this to organization. Uh, this is not classified anyway. Pwede rin hmm. ma-research ito sa Comelec. Saan nang galing yung mga boto ninyo? Dahil sa, you know, the demographics can tell us a very good picture ng perception ng botante. Kakaloy. Thank you, uh, Melo. No? Uh, tama ka, Melo. Since uh, we participated in 2001, hanggang ngayon na iwan, nasa kongreso pa rin ng uh, Bayan Muna. No? In fact, uh, nung unang uh, lumahok ang Bayan Muna in 2001, kumuha siya ng tatlong seats din. No? Uh, almost uh, more than 2 million at ang boto ng Bayan Muna. No? But uh, naging uh, parang scissor niyo na, Melo. No? Uh, there was a time na naging dalawa na lang uh, from three seats to two seats nung pumasok na yung maraming mga party list no at nung nagbago-bago yung uh, desisyon ng Korte Suprema uh, and eventually in the 17th Congress uh, yun yung pinaka parang pinaka low namin dahil I was the only one in the 17th Congress no but uh, fortunately dito sa 18th Congress Melo uh, we learned our uh, lessons no in the uh, organizationally and uh, the other aspect ng aming uh, uh, pagtakbo or pagpananatili bilang uh, uh, party list So in the 19 uh, 2019 election fortunately uh, naging number two kami sa election na uh, election na yon at nakakuha kami ng tatlong seats so where are we going to attribute that no siguro una melo tama ka doon uh, clear yung aming constituency no uh, ang aming mga organisasyon unfortunately uh, ito yung mga organisasyon na talagang matindi rin ang atake uh, kung uh, sa numero ng mga napas lang Uh, nasampahan ng mga gawa-gawang kaso, uh, ang bayan muna na siguro ang pinakamaraming ganong kaso. No? Top grocery and, uh, yata kayo eh. <laughs> yes, and uh, displacement. No? Uh, in the uh, uh, 2016 election, 2019 election, yung aming base, halimbawa, yung mga uh, lumads, no? mga indigenous peoples, no? na-displace sila because of massive uh, military operations. But, <clears throat> uh, sabi ko nga, uh, 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 yung Amin namang uh, organisasyon no ay talagang uh, ano yan na hindi tumitigil sa panahon lang ng eleksyon na go-organisa. Bagkos, despite our limitations, tuloy-tuloy yung aming organizing no. Uh, kahit na nung uh, 2013 na uh, Melo nung 16 Congress, alam mo ba nang unang nilagdaan kong panukalang batas is to abolish the pork barrel system, ano? And uh, eventually no mag-decide nga ang Korte Suprema, wala na yung PIDA, wala yung DAP, no. And uh, somehow it affects the you know yung delivery of services no but uh, again uh, na- naipakita natin na uh, ang uh, paninitili ng bayan muna bilang uh, bosses no ng mga marginalized sectors sa uh, isang uh, kung uh, institusyon na katulad ng kongreso ay mahalaga no at uh, nakikita ito ng aming mga constituents no although uh, siguro peculiar lang na nangyari sa 19 at uh, nitong 2019 election melo dahil nga sa 17 Congress nag-iisa tayo. Kailangan maging uh, maging uh, ang ginawa namin noon ay talagang kailangan uh, uh, tumindig sa mga mahalagang issues ano at maging uh, visible no lalo na pa sa paglaban para sa interes ng ating mga mamamayan. And uh, siguro nakatulong din sa amin yung uh, ang numero kasi namin nung uh, 2019 election is number one. no nung magka nung mag-raffle na 
nakuha namin yung number one. So, kaya nga, kahit dun sa Spratlis, no, sa Kalayaan Islands, eh, may mga boto kami doon. Uh, sabi ko, hindi naman tayo ng ampanya sa Kalayaan. <laughs> so, factor <laughs> din pala yun. Yung factor din yung kung anong number mo ron. Yes. Uh, in fact, isa yan sa naging uh, problema rin dito sa party list. Dahil noon, nung hindi nirarafle yung number, ang daming nagsimula sa A. No? So, may number one pa. Oo. Tapos nung makita nila na marami ng A, ang iba nilagyan ng number one. No? So, una, one, ganun, ganun. So, ang ginawa ng Comelec nga, uh, uh, nirafle na since I think uh, sa, uh, yung uh, 2016 election, nagsimula yan. No? Or 2013, uh, thereabouts. No? So, yun nyo. No? But uh, again, uh, ang uh, talagang uh, uh, bigyan ko ng uh, mariin no? na parte rito ay yung... Uh, Tuloy-tuloy namin pag-oorganisa sa aming mga constituents, no? sa mga marginalized nating mga constituents. No? And yung pagtutulak natin ng mga uh, meaningful legislation sa loob ng kongreso at pinapaabot natin sila. At kasama sila doon sa proseso. No? Uh, tinatanong namin sila ano bang gusto natin, ano bang kailangang mailatag natin sa uh, kongreso ng mga panukalang batas. And kaakibat dyan, yung pagsusulong din namin ng mga panukalang resolusyon. No? Mm-hmm. Every time merong na para mag-imbestiga. No? Sa usapin man yan ng pagtaas ng presyo ng kuryente, tubig, uh, doon sa usapin ng uh, ASF, or even human rights violations. No? Uh, kahit na marami rito melo, hindi, naman pal- hindi pa rin nadidinig no? ng mga respective committees. But it's very important that we have to give voice. No? Yun ang mahalaga. Uh, yun ang aming kukulin sa loob ng Kongreso na Uh, kahit na sa arena ito na maliit ang ating boses ay kailangang magingay tayo rito no, it, eventually i think that will uh, cascade no kahit napaka ano niyan dahan-dahan sabi ko nga kanina it's a painstaking uh, painstaking na trabaho but we have to do it uh, because we know na kailang gawin ito uh, lalong-lalo na sa institusyon na katulad ng kongreso na hanggang sa ngayon uh, gaya ng nabanggit ng ating mga kasamahang resource persons ay kontrolado ng elites no na uh, ng mga may pera at ng mga pamilya na sa panahon pa ng Kastila andiyan na yung mga pamilyang okay. yan uh, briefly uh, congressman Kaloy ano impact ng red tagging sa constituencies nyo uh, will it reduce your chances of getting seats uh, ano ba ang nakikita mo may free publicity ka every now and then sa presidential address eh lagi kang nakukumusta ni Pangulong Duterte <laughs> Well, Melo, I, 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 I have to be candid. Talaga may epekto yan. No? Dahil nga doon sa chilling effect. No? Uh, nung nangyayari sa aming mga leader, halimbawa, nung nga pinas lang sa panahon ng pandemya, gitna ng pandemya last year, April 30, pinas lang yung aming uh, Ilo-Ilo City Coordinator, si uh, Jury Porquia. He was then doing uh, community kitchen. No? Uh, nung mapas lang siya dahil he was red tag, he was verified. No? And uh, marami sa aming makasamahan no? uh, na nasampahan din ng mga gawa-gawang kaso. Meron talaga epekto yan. But uh, uh, despite that, uh, tingin namin, Melo, hindi kami dapat magpatalo dyan sa ganung, uh, ganung uh, pangyayari. No? Because eventually, uh, parang you will be uh, defeated by default. No? Kung ganun. No? Um, naipakita namin yan in 2019 election. Sabi ko nga, no, grabe rin ang atake sa amin noon. Uh, sa lahat ng pag-iikot ko, dahil ako lang nag-iisang kinatawan mo ng bayan muna, uh, sa pag-iikot ko sa buong bansa, sasalubungin ka ng mga tarpaulin na nandun yung mukha mo na you are being vilified, demonized, no? Uh, as a terrorist. Uh, but uh, uh, nanindigan tayo, no? Sabi na, malinis ang ating record. Bukas ang ating record dyan sa Kongreso since 2001. Nandiyan na ang bayan muna. Uh, wala itong uh, bahid ng anumang isyu ng korupsyon. No? At uh, uh, kailangan tuloy-tuloy lang. Yun ang namin sinasabi. Okay. Tuloy-tuloy lang natin gawain ito. Okay. Uh, Congressman Salo, kayo sa Kabayan, how do you choose your nominees? How do you choose your candidates? Kung hindi classified, ano? Siyempre, <laughs> uh, pina- pinipili po natin yung mga membro po ng maging nominees po natin within the membership din ng Kabayan Party List. I'll just share also our experience sa Kabayan Party List dahil uh, noong 2016, nakadalawa pong seats po kami pero 2019, naging isa lang po. Ako na lang po yung pangala umulit. Pero siguro ang epekto kasi sa amin or the primary reason dahil uh, open naman po ito sa publiko kasi na nagkaroon kami ng internal squabble it was an internal uh, issue within the party list. Kaya I suppose, uh, ako rin mismo, uh, for in 2017, uh, 2016, 17, 17th Congress, 
naging busy talaga ako sa dalawang bagay lang. Busy po ako doon sa trabaho sa loob ng kongreso at busy doon sa away doon sa loob ng party list. So ito po yung nakapekto sa amin and I suppose na offend din siguro yung marami po sa mga sumuporta po sa amin na yung sinuportahan po nila at uh, then of the day ang nangyari nag-away-away pa sa loob ng publiko although hindi natin kinalimutan kung ano yung talagang rason kung bakit po tayo nandun sa kongreso pero ang nakalimutan po namin doon din yung tinatawag po, binabanggit po ni uh, Congressman Kalo yung organizing uh, dahil mm-hmm na it took a backseat dahil syempre, paano mo ma-organize kung mayroon kang issue within mismo doon sa loob. So isa ron talaga yon sa naging uh, rason kung bakit medyo nakita talaga namin, bumaba talaga yung uh, boto namin doon. Pero I suppose dito naman dahil uh, kahit isa na lang, pero tayo po yung nakatayo po rito at patuloy yung mga advokasiya kung ano po yung mga sinumpan po natin noon at sinabi po natin sa mga kababayan po natin, tuloy-tuloy natin pinaglalaban yun at sinusulong ang mga yun. At the same time, wala na rin po yung issue and I suppose uh, makikita naman po ng mga sumuporta talaga sa kabayan party list na tuloy-tuloy yung pagsulong ng mga advokasiya na ipinangako po namin sa kanila. Good. Maganda yan. Very brief lang yung tanong ko kay uh, Professor Kraft, kay Attorney Yusinko, at kay Chester Cabalza, kay Dr. Cabalza. Uh, doon sa United Kingdom, merong opposition, merong ill power. Yung nasa opposition, meron silang shadow cabinet. Parang once na magkaroon ng pagbabago sa liderato, meron silang preparadong tao. Uh, I don't know. Uh, dito ba sa sitwasyon ngayon, Meron bang masasabing oposisyon sa Pilipinas? Yan. Professor Kraft. Um, magandang halimbawa kasi yung uh, party system sa UK ng isang sistema na ibang-iba doon sa ating sistema. No? So parang ang ano kasi sa kanila, babalik tayo doon sa, sa tanong ng um, organisado, institutionalized. No? So parang the reason why you can actually talk about the idea of a shadow cabinet kasi uh, may continuity yung party. So kumbaga yung mga miyembro ng partido na yun, no, um, umangat sila doon sa ano, umangat sila within the uh, party organization at nakilala sila. No? Pa- parang yung ano na shadow cabinet, ibig sabihin nun, ikaw yung kinikilala na eksperto pagdating sa defense matters. So ikaw yung shadow defense minister parang ganun yung isang ano doon no um, the other thing that has to be taken into consideration is yung opposition sa UK kasi no officially ang tawag sa kanya it's the queen's loyal opposition right so parang hindi sila kinikilala na kaaway ng estado so, di ba may ano hindi, ko, hindi naman company union <laughs> hindi naman ano yun ano hindi company uh, union hindi 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 naman ano yun uh, um pero importante yun. So, kasi parang kinikilala na meron silang role within yung process, yung parliamentary process, no? At ang ano doon ay um, dahil may shadow cabinet ka, ang responsibilidad ng miyembro ng shadow cabinet na yon sa opposition ay tuwing may question R, no? Sila ang responsible for actually asking questions, no? Raising issues, no, with the uh, uh, with the government. Right? So, ano ibig sabihin nun? Kailangan handa lagi sumagot yung gobyerno doon sa mga tanong na yun. Okay? Hindi ito pwede na parang babaliwaliin mo lang yung mga tanong kasi uh, tata naman, uh, hindi naman importante yung position. Hindi. Sila yung magpapakita kasi na hindi kayo handa, hindi niyo napag-isipan yung mga isyo ninyo, no? at ito yung mga bagay kung saan vulnerable kayo sa ano ng tao. So, doon pumapasok yung um, gano'ng kaimportante yung organisasyon. No? At kung titignan natin yung ating sistema, the mere fact na uh, ang oposisyon natin ay hindi uh, una, una wala babalik ako doon sa punto ni ni ni, ni uh, Michael kanina na wala naman tayong uh, partido, kesyo uh, parties in power na talagang ano or opposition parties, no? Um, so parang ang ano natin doon ay pag tinignan natin yung Uh, yung opposition, meron silang kalikanya nga na. I mean, at tignan lang natin, no, kung, kung titignan natin ang bayan muna, halimbawa, no, with all due respect to ano, uh, Congressman Zarate, no, ang ano ng bayan muna is that they're part of the uh, uh, the opposition, no, uh, uh, so to speak. No? Pero, um, meron ka bang makikita na 
uh, uh, organisado yung opposition to take over government just in case they win. Kasi yun yung punto with the idea of a shadow, gov uh, a shadow cabinet. Eh. It's a shadow government. You're ready to take over government in the event that you should win the election. E dito kasi parang yung opposition, no, hindi rin sila nagkakasama-sama. Eh. Diba? May kanikanya silang uh, 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 agenda. No? Uh, na pagdating ng election at saka lang natin titingnan kung saan nagkakaroon ng convergence no when you what you need is a continuing process na kung saan kinecheck niyo dapat ang gobyerno so wala talaga yung sistema natin doesn't really create the conditions within which pwede ka magkaroon ng ganung klasing sistema na may shadow cabinet ka kung sakasakali uh, siguro that will be very good bakit na pag-usapan yan separately no we will talk about it Uh, ang problema yata, merong mga ilang shadowy characters. Eh. Uh, that's another issue. Yes, uh, Attorney Mike. Uh, yeah, tama si Professor Kraft. No? Our current uh, constitutional framework does not allow for really the evolution of a shadow government type of system. Kasi we conduct elections every three years. Eh. So yung turnover natin, administrative turnover natin is is very frequent no? and it's very quick. So our uh, setting aside the fact that our majority, pa our major parties are ampaw, eh, they have no incentive. The, the, the system does not uh, incentivize them to have that kind of mentality that they have to offer alter alternative policies, alternative programs, just in case they... Uh, assume government because mm -hmm. uh, anyway, pagdating ng election, all they need to do is tear down the incumbent and they will become uh, incumbent uh, themselves. So it's, it's a mix of uh, our system is not designed that way and also our political culture has not evolved uh, to foster that kind of mentality amongst our political elites. Okay. Yes, uh, Chester? Yes, sir. Uh, I do agree dun sa mga sinabi ng mga nauna sa akin po. No? Uh, add on na lang. I think uh, the problem also lies with our very personalistic uh, political uh, uh, politics. No? Uh, I think it's not issue-based. And uh, that's the reason why mahina yung mga uh, party, uh, political parties natin. Very fragmented basically. Kaya hindi mo na alam kung sino ang opposition o kung may opposition ba talaga because basically that's our political culture and uh, that all boils down also to the personality uh, and also given that other is that plur plurality also no diversification uh, in the representation uh, nahirapan tayo no unlike in some other countries na dalawang parties lang yung pagpipilian nila so hindi very limited and may continuity yung reforms at may character yung mga yung mga nirerepresent nilang mga parties unlike here meron tayong uh, na mga words na paru-paro uh, ganyan no <laughs> political butterflies kasi <laughs> yung lakas, yung ano mahina so nagbabago so walang consistency walang institutionalization okay. and translate din yun sa political culture natin basically kaya ganun mamili yung mga Pilipino right. ng kanila mga pinuno yun po okay uh, we have uh, a good friend from Kidapawan si Kaloy Bautista Kaloy nasaan ka uh, can i see you please go ahead With your questions, pasaka na kaloy. Yeah, uh, yes. Yung video mo na san? Yeah. Kumusta melo? Yeah, wala yung video. Go ahead with your questions uh, okay. and uh, para kanino? Go ahead. Una siguro. Yeah. Oh, thank, thank you very much, Melo, and uh, magandang umaga sa lahat ng mga bisita natin ano. Uh, gusto ko tanungin si ano si representative Serate. Uh, kasi medyo mahaba-haba yung kanyang experience na bangit niya kanina no doon sa sa party list. Alam natin na ngayong 2022 supposed to pero most probably baka maging 2025. Uh, gusto ko mag-focus sa Bangsamoro Autonomous Region. Uh, kasi nga yung yung aming papel na sinusulatan ang anong tawag dito ang coverage niya is generally yung Bangsamoro Autonomous Region and there is something very important that's, that's supposed to happen in the Bangsamoro sa either sa 2022 or sa 2025 yung sinasabi na pagpapatupad ng bagong sistema na parliamentary 
yung setup ng gobyerno at magkakaroon ng tinatawag na proportional representation supposedly at uh, ang election sa pamamagitan ng partido hindi na individual well hopefully mangyari nga but just in case ano ba yung mga dapat na gawin para matiyak na hindi katulad doon sa nangyari sa national hindi ma-hijack yung mga partido lalo lalo na yung mga partido na para sa mga iba't ibang sektor ano hindi ma-hijack ng mga politiko katulad na nangyari sa national anong mga tips na pwede niyo ibigay representative sa rate well uh, maraming salamat uh, to kayong nakaloy no matagal na rin kaming nagkasama ni Kaloy sa sa uh, media no no tayo ay nasa media pa mellow pero uh, siguro ang uh, mahalaga ang siguro masabi ko para sa usapin na hindi ko alam kung nagpasa na ang uh, Bangsa Moro Transition Authority ng isang uh, batas no patungkol sa election uh, farm no but talaga uh, Melo no katulad nung ating panukala ng mga regular meron atang yeah, uh, mga regular okay no? uh, sa kasalukuyang party system kailangan linawin doon sa panukalang sa batas no na nag-aalaw ng party list sa uh, uh, barm na ito ay para sa uh, halimbawa if this is intended for the marginalized sector ay dapat malinaw yon no walang gray area dapat doon na uh, katulad ng nangyayari dito sa ating kasalukuyang batas na paiba-iba ang desisyon no until finally sinabi na hindi lang ito uh, para sa marginalized sector kundi para rin sa mga other uh, regional parties no so yun dapat malinaw yun uh, pangalawa siguro uh, na masasabi ko dapat malinaw rin yung uh, appropriate decision making body of a party list group no that that will be given the power uh, for example to recall its representative for uh, any violation of the provision of its uh, charter no as a party list at siguro dapat malinaw din uh, kayo yung kaloy uh, yung ang uh, no, sino ba ang pwedeng nominate no Uh, na mga uh, na magre-represent sa isang party list no uh, the nomination of party list representatives should be done also by the highest uh, policy making body of the party list group no so because this will enable its membership no na uh, democratically ay piliin nila yung kanilang uh, mga nominees hindi pwedeng nag-decide lang si ganito at si ganyan no si founder or sino ba sa partido dapat The highest policy making body ibig sabihin yung kongreso mismo ang pipili ng kanilang mga nominado no so uh, at syempre uh, kami marami kaming mga gusto pang ipasok din no halimbawa doon sa sino ba ang uh, mga nominado uh, meron kaming mga qualification na dapat hindi ito uh, miyembro halimbawa ng uh, uh, or uh, kapatid or uh, kamag-anak nung dating nag-serve Uh, as mayor, vice mayor, governor, etc. No? So para maipasok na rin yung uh, anti-dynasty provision doon sa batas na yan no? as a part of the uh, requirement. Uh, dapat din uh, kung uh, yung mga dating appointed uh, sa mga posisyon katulad ng uh, uh, pagiging cabinet member, no? uh, undersecretary or secretary, ay siguro dapat uh, hindi rin siya qualified doon na maging nominado. No? and several others na pwedeng ipasok doon sa uh, qualification ng sino ang nominees to strengthen no sa pa rin dito para mas strengthen yung uh, real representation ng mga sektor na dapat uh, nirerepresent ng mga party list no uh, so yun yung uh, mga ilang punto no and syempre mahalaga uh, sa organizing kagaya uh, ng aming experience no talagang uh, painstaking organizing yan no at may malinaw na programa ang isang party list kami mayroon kaming programang nilalatag sa aming mga miyembro no bago ka uh, tanggapin as miyembro nagkakaroon muna ng mga uh, uh, education seminars at ilalatag sa iyo yung programa kung katanggap-tanggap sa iyo yung programa yun sa kalamang tatanggapin as member no so i think these are some of the uh, pwedeng tips as you mentioned it no Uh, uh, yun nga lang, hindi ko alam kung uh, may naipasa ng uh, batas ang uh, Bangsa Moro Transition Authority on this uh, kaloy. Yes, opo. Ang 
Pagkakalam po natin sa kasalukuyan, pinag-aaralan pa sa cabinet level ano, yung uh, proposed o yung draft na Bangsamoro Electoral Code. One positive thing uh, na napag-alaman natin, nakakita tayo ng draft ng local government code ng Bangsamoro na naghihintay pa rin maipasa. And uh, we saw some uh, anti dynasty provisions which is positive ang question na lang doon uh, kung papasabay ito sa parlamento uh, anyway para po naman kay professor Cabalsa at saka kay uh, representative Salo kasi nabanggit nila kanina no yung yung papel ng uh, social media ng internet ano doon sa election decision making ng mga mamamayan lalo lalo na pagdating sa impluwensya sa election totoo po yun we, we recognize that also but we also acknowledge na malaking bahagi ng Pilip yes, Pinas, malaking bahagi ng ating electorate hindi konektado sa internet. Uh, so, paano po yung pinakamabuti paraan para ang tawag dito, ano, mga itaas din yung antas na hindi lang ng kanilang partisipasyon kundi pati nakaalaman pagdating dito sa usaping pampolitika. Alam naman natin, kahit na anong sabihin natin, isang malaking question talaga yan, problema natin dito sa Pilipinas yung connectivity. <laughs> And uh, when you talk of connectivity, it all boils down to money. Kung wala kang data, wala kang connection. Eh, karamihan ng mga mamamayan natin may hirap eh. Uh, kaya nga walang social media account. Kahit nasa mga syudad, iilan lang siguro yung meron. Yung meron lang talagang sinasabi natin okay. stable connection. So how do you deal with that? Okay, uh, magandang katanungan po yun, sir. No? Uh, basically, ang dapat may obligasyon doon ay ang state, no? the government itself, kung paano niya babaguhin at i-reforma yung, uh, yung, 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 ano natin, no? yung uh, pag-conduct ng election natin. And basically, this is the best time. Kasi may problema na this is the best time to reform uh, the uh, electoral process natin using technology because basically kailangan natin maging innovative ngayon and i think this is uh, a way for us to rethink our uh, 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 policies also now uh, doon sa katanungan na paano natin maiitataas ang antas no uh, sinasabi natin kanina sa pag-aaral na lumabas uh, majority of the electorate po ating uh, population are very young and they are capable and knowledgeable of this uh, platform. So kailangan yung COMELEC and the government itself should adapt to the needs of that uh, electorate. Sila ang masusunod kasi sila yung boboto at pipili ng mamumuno, uh, ng, uh, mamumuno sa ating bansa. Secondly, uh, when it comes to the miseducation, uh, this is also the best time for us to re-educate and continuously educate our electorate. Ngayon, magbukas na tayo ngayon ng mga, um, ng mga batas na kailangan ayusin natin uh, ang ating uh, electoral process. Unang-una, uh, dahil uh, yan, yan, napag-uusapan na natin ngayon yung uh, political system, party list system, I think yung mga bata na, na, na mga young population voters natin ay, are very, ano, are very uh, open to these kinds of uh, discourses and discussions. Mm -hmm. Huwag natin i-underestimate sila dahil unang-una magagaling sila at alam nila kung anong gusto nila. Yun lang po. Okay. Uh, Kong Salo? Yes, Carlos. Kaloy. Siguro uh, pagdating po doon sa connectivity, nagpapasalamat tayo sa pagkat base po sa report, ay tumas daw po yung uh, connectivity daw natin. So, isang positive sign yun. And umaasa rin po tayo na tuloy-tuloy po ito. And, uh, of course, sa pagpasok po ng third telco, umaasa din po tayo na lahat po ng mga hindi na aabot ay magkaroon din po ng opportunity na maabot din po sila para magkaroon po sila ng access din at chance para ma-inform po sila even through social media. Pagdating naman po doon sa ano yung pwedeng gawin, pagdating po dito sa education, alam po ninyo, uh, may panukala po tayong batas sa Kongreso na lahat po ng prangkisa na binibigay ng gobyerno at mga naibigay na, e eh, isama po doon yung tiyatawag po natin na public service time. At kasama po doon sa panukala po natin na public service time, e eh, bigyan po ng pagkakataon na ma-educate yung publiko po natin, kasama po doon dito sa pagtuturo ng about voters education. So, uh, although kasalukuyan pa rin po yun, hindi pa rin po nadidinig, pero ang nais po natin doon lahat ng existing ngayon na prangkisa, whether or not bibigyan pa sila o nandyan na, dapat may panahon, may oras 
na nakalaan talaga para sa pagbibigay ng impormasyon at pag-educate sa mga kababayan po natin. Mm-hmm. Okay. All right. Uh, Kaloy, okay tayo? Mula dyan sa Kidapawan? Okay ka na? All right. Siguro, let's look forward. Meron mahalagang binanggit dito yung tungkol sa personality-based no? na sistema at walang political agenda. Hindi ba natin pwedeng gawa ng paraan iyon? Dahilan sa kahit walang performance pero nakikita sa social media, nakikita nagsiselfie, eh nananalo na. Uh, is there a way we could get out of such a condition or situation? I hope it's not a quagmire, uh, Professor Kraft. Um, again, this goes back to the question kasi ng, ano, um, where, how would you incentivize no, such reforms, no, uh, um, uh, our political parties to actually uh, undertake those kinds of reforms and for um, those who are responsible for institutions to, 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 to accept those kinds of reforms or to institute those kinds of reforms. Um, ang ang, ang ang logical kasi na na sagot diyan ay kailangan ang mga tao mismo ang humingi ng pagbabago, di ba? Parang ganon yung ano doon, na parang uh, sila ang uh, dapat nag mag, uh, magpe-pressure, no, doon sa mga uh, uh, nasa posisyon, no, uh, para i-institute itong mga itong mga reforma na ito. Ngayon, babalik tayo doon sa tanong ng voter education no at uh, in other words that that whole thing of educating our electorate no um to be more per- participative no to be much more uh, uh, involved no uh, in the political processes hindi lang sa election di ba parang ito yung sinasabi natin kanina na parang ang 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 politika ng Pilipinas ay hindi lang dapat tungkol sa election pero ang problema natin para sa mga, mga mamamayan natin parang na ang ang kanilang pinaka-involvement ay laging nandoon sa election lamang no parang doon lang sila pumapasok no so ang ang ano dapat parte ng 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 electoral uh, ng 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 reforma mo no uh, ay uh, sorry yung voter education mo ay dapat ipa ipa convince uh, uh, ng mga tao na uh, dapat magi aktibo sila sa politika okay. no Uh, uh, na hindi lamang ito tungkol sa eleksyon na, na parang yung voters education natin ay is a continuing process of informing and making people understand that they have an important role to play no uh, in 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 the country's politics no okay. so kasama doon yung proseso ngayon ng ano ng, ng reforma yeah uh, bago pa bago ko ipasagot kay attorney Mike at uh, kay Dr. Cabalza pero paano yung term of office ng local government officials tatlong taon ang sabi nung isang gobernador nung araw sa Camarines Sur si uh, well namaya pa na siya alam mo Melo sabi niya uh, si Governor Bulaong may he rest in peace Melo tatlong taon unang taon pasasalamat doon sa mga bumoto so iikutin ko yan magpapasalamat ako pangalawang taon trabaho ako pangatlong taon kampanya Kampanya. na ulit. So, paano ngayon yun? Uh, Everlasting yung ikot-ikot, tapos kamay-kamay, and you begin to kiss babies again. Three years. Is it good enough? Is it short? Anong pwedeng gawin? Uh, uh, Ang ano doon kasi, ang isang isang sagot din doon ay indication kasi yun ng personalistic politics natin. eh. So, parang ang ano doon, eh, kaya mo titignan yung tatlong taon na ikaw lamang yun, No, tapos nakahati ngayon do sa mga gagawin mo unang taon, ito yung gagawin ko, pangalawang taon, ito yung gagawin ko, pangatlo ay kampanya na ulit, no? Um, kasi hindi institusyon ang pinag-uusapan, hindi institusyon yung nagdadala. Right? Now, of course, I'm not been I, I'm not downplaying yung role ng personalities, no? Yung si go, si governor, si mayor, importante 'yan, no? Pero the reason why parang laging nakasalala yan do sa tao ay kaantingin nga natin, yung mga institusyon hindi importante or at least yung institution does not provide the continuity and i think yun yung isang ano doon na itong dalawang to are not mutually exclusive right na parang okay. yung political institutions mo at the local level at saka si local ano si local uh, uh, politician dapat they're actually working together so that parang ang mangyayari mo ngayon diyan ay 
yung tatlong taon may nangyayari. Maaring hindi si politician personally ang 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 may ginagawa pero yung mga institution tumatakbo, di ba? But the weakness of institutions no makes us rely on the politician, right? Uh, to to okay. make it work, no? And credit credit is always given to the politician rather than to the to, to the institutions, no? Again, realities ng politics natin. Okay. Yeah, thank you. Attorney Mike Uh, actually, wala na tayo magagawa regarding uh, <laughs> the term limits of our local officials because it's in the Constitution. No? Yes, so, of, course, of course. Actually, our Constitution says that uh, Congress can desi design whatever local autonomy framework they desire. That they cannot only the, the only thing that they cannot touch on is the three-term limit. No? Okay. So the 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 overhaul of the local government code is one response. But concretely, no, one way to address yung concern na yun, yung sinabi mo regarding yung sa sinabi ni former Governor Bulao is really to uh, reform the power of recall. Kasi currently, the power of recall can only be, recall of local officials, can only be exercised by the constituents or by the voters on the second year of that three-year term. Uh -huh. Hindi siya pwede on the first year, hindi siya pwede on the last year. So effectively on the third year. Now, if you change that and make it more uh, freely accessible to, to voters, then maybe that can be an instrument that they can use to, you know, to whip the local official uh, to performing uh, his function. No? Na meron silang laging uh, threat na pag hindi ka nag-perform, kahit first year mo pa lang, eh, tatanggalin ka namin through the power of recall. So, that, concretely, that's one thing that, one reform that can be done in order to ensure that our local executives perform even with that three-term limit. Uh, 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 that three-term limit. Okay. Uh, objectively, uh, is there any lesson we learned from the Palawan exercise na hindi yata magkasundo, paghati-hati na lang, tapos sabi ng mga tao, ayaw namin. <laughs> De, ako, ang, ang, ang lesson ko doon sa nangyari sa Palawan is that Chinese influence is, uh, uh, is, uh, can be a negative thing also. <laughs> it, can, it can be a negative thing. Yung, is there uh, anything that I don't know that you know that you may wish to share with <laughs> Maybe us? Maybe si Dr. Cabalsa will have more to say. <laughs> <laughs> okay, okay. Yes, uh, Chester. <laughs> Uh, ako, I don't mind if uh, there's a three-year uh, limit, no? term limit. Uh, that is a good uh, challenge. Doon natin masusubo kung magaling talaga yung politiko. Because uh, the traditional mindset is, yung sinabi nga ninyo niya, Thanksgiving, tapos performs as a second year, and then he will take off the next election on the third year. That is the, the, the very uh, traditional mindset na dapat natin... Uh, tapusin na in this kind of vicious cycle in our political system because it only uh, propagates the hegemony of uh, feudal uh, politics. Ang maganda dito is kailangan ang mga politiko natin, sila yung magpapasiklab ngayon. Kung baga, reality show na this is what I can offer and I should do this. Kapag hindi ka nag-perform, then that position is not for you. So kailangan natin ma-instill sa utak ng mga uh, electorate natin that we only choose the best politicians who can deliver uh, services to us. Hindi okay. yun dapat na, uh, na kailangan uh, yung political patronage eh, that has been a sin in our political system. Kailangan na matanggal yan. And that is a problem. And uh, that, 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 uh, that uh, keeps on uh, ano, of, of, of uh, uh, destroying our political system. And I think yung nangyari din sa sa Palawan, Palawan no? Uh, I think um, uh, kasi meron na mga Manchurian candidates tayo, so kailangan talaga na <laughs> mamili tayo, no? It's a uh, um, uh, <laughs> our destiny in the future. Kailangan po maging mautak tayo, we outwit uh, our decisions on that kinds of uh, choices po. Uh, okay. Uh, pwede na bang integrate sa school curriculum yung voters education tulad ng disaster preparedness? Uh, do we have any taker? Mm -hmm. Sangkater ba na yung subject kasi eh, kung idadagdag mo pa yung voters education? Don't you think this is the role of civil society? Uh, any takers? Before we say thank you? Kakaloy? Yes, uh, Mel. I think uh, 
uh, ano yan, obligasyon ng lahat, no? Uh, not only the civil society, but especially from the government, no? Uh, in fact, uh, ang halimbawa, ang COMELEC, uh, uh, tuloy-tuloy namang ginagawa yan ng Commission on Election, pero siguro, uh, mag-level up din yung uh, civil society, for example. Uh, dahil uh, kami, tuloy-tuloy yung aming voters education campaign, naglalabas kami ng mga materials, no? Uh, hinihikayat yung mga kabataan, lalong-lalo ng mga kabataan. Sabi nga ni Professor Chester kanina, ang demographics ng uh, election ngayon, napakarami ng kabataan. No? Kaya hinihikayat natin sila na magrehistro. Uh, at uh, especially, napaka, hindi ako naniniwala na hindi critical ang mga kabataan ngayon. No? Napaka-critical nila, in fact. No? Uh, kailangan lang i-ano natin yung energies nila. No? Kasi siguro kung nakikita lang yan sa Twitter or sa other social media media platforms, kailangan itong pagiging critical ng ating mga kabataan ngayon ay mailabas nila. No? Mm-hmm. Uh, hindi na mahalaga. Dahil sa, sabi nga nila, naging cliche na yan. Eh. Ang kabataan pa rin yung pag-asa ng bayan. No? So kung ano man ang nangyayari sa ating uh, lipunan ngayon, sa ating uh, bansa, uh, na, na uh, malaki ang pasanin ng mga kabataan dyan. Kaya uh, again, going back to your question, uh, mahalaga ang ating papel lahat. No? Uh, lalong-lalo na yung mga reform-minded individuals Dahil totoo naman, meron talagang sektor sa ating lipunan na gusto nilang manatili ang ganitong kaayusan ng ating bayan. No? At uh, it behooves upon us na gusto natin na magkaroon ng uh, meaningful na pagbabago para rin sa next generation na uh, yeah, mag-step up, mag-level up, mag-adjust, lalong-lalo na sa ganitong uh, kalagayan na uh, siguro lahat tayo rito, hindi pa naman natin ito nadanasan, itong ganitong klaseng krisis na uh, pinalala ng pandemya ng COVID. No? So all of us are adjusting. And all of us, kailangan maging creative tayo. No? Mahalaga ang papel ng social media ngayon, pero mahalaga rin ang uh, tuloy-tuloy na pag-organisa on the ground. No? Ma- maipaabot natin sa ating mga mamamayan yung mga dapat na informasyon na critical sa gagawin nilang desisyon. Especially, Melo, you know, uh, ilang buwan na lang, a certificate, uh, filing of certificates of candidacy na. Ilang uh, tulog na lang. Uh, pagising natin, election na naman. No? So, mahalaga na... Uh, Ngayon pa lang, mag-step up na. No? Mag-step up na lahat. Maraming efforts. And all of these efforts na uh, democratic efforts ay uh, dapat suportahan natin. No? Dahil hindi lang naman ito para sa atin, kundi sabi ko nga, para rin sa kinabukasan ng ating bayan. Okay. Uh, Melo, pwede rin bang yes, please. Yes, yes, please. Yes, Melo. Yeah, yeah. Nabanggit po natin mo po kanina kung kailangan bang ipasok pa ito sa curriculum. Uh, sa tingin ko po, Melo, dapat din dahil Siyempre, yung voters education po natin, ito yung responsibilidad at obligasyon ng lahat ng sektor sa lipunan po natin. Hindi lang po ito um, ay iwan po natin sa uh, mga civil society, kundi pangunahin po itong poder ng gobyerno rin dahil yung uh, pondo ng ating uh, yung taxes, ang nag-spend naman po yan yung gobyerno. So ang tanong po natin yan, it's really a question of prioritization. Saan ba natin talaga dapat gasosin? Hindi ba mas maganda na kasama po dun sa pagkakagasosan ng ating pamahalan? Yung pag-educate sa mga kababayan po natin, sa lahat mga electorate po natin. Kasi papansin po natin yung pinag-uusapan po nila natin pa kanina ng mga po natin, na syempre yung patronage politics, etc. etc. Ah, uh, Actually, larawan din lang niya ng lipunan po talaga natin na hindi tayo talaga merit-based, kundi our performance-based. Ang laging uh, tinitingnan po natin ano yung pwede nating makuha, transactional palagi yung mga ano po natin. Kaya personality-based din yung kinalalabasan. Pero it's a question, saan ba na, alin ba yung nauna doon? Yung bang dahil uh, tawag dito, yung hindi merit-based dahil personality-based, walin ba doon ang nauna kaya napektuhan? I suppose pareho doon nangyari and mutually uh, reinforcing na sila ngayon na hindi naman maganda. Kaya mahalaga dito na bumalik po tayo doon sa punto na pa, doon pa lang sa pag-aaral po ng mga bata, nakuhulman na po natin kung ano yung pinakamaganda na ibibigyan na po saan natin sa kanila, na-educate po natin sila uh, mula sa pinakabata hanggang sa pag-alis po nila doon sa institusyon na kung saan hinuhulma yung kailang kaisipan, inaintindihan nilang maigi kung ano yung responsibilidad nila at obligasyon po nila sa bayan. At ang isa sa obligasyon po na yan ay pagpili ng mga leader na talagang alam natin na sila yung magsusulong ng interes ng bawat sa atin. Yeah. Uh, I just recalled uh, a friend, uh, si Commodore uh, Frank Tulin, na kaibigan din ni Elmer Bandol. Uh, sabi niya, you know, if the FAMAS Committee on Awards would look into how our politicians perform, 
they can get the best actor award, best actress. Because most of them, not all of them though, eh, they can make people laugh, they can make people cry, and steal our money without, without us knowing why. <laughs> anyway, uh, I, I need your parting statements, gentlemen, before I call on a good friend, Attorney Getz of uh, Hans Seidel Foundation. Uh, Mike, uh, will you be doing more researches into our kind of government? Uh, are you, do you have something? Uh, yes, no, uh, ongoing naman yung research namin dyan on political dynasties and political reforms. Uh, but uh, siguro, as my last message uh, here, uh, I think for 2022, given our experience uh, in the pandemic, it's time for us to adopt the passive mentality, which is iba naman. Iba naman ang iboto natin sa 2022. Sumubok naman tayo ng iba. So yun lang, Melo. No? Uh, let's uh, keep it simple. Uh, adopt a mentality na iba naman. Iba naman ang iboto natin sa 2022. Uh, hindi. Uh, buti binanggit mo yan, yung iba naman. Bukas merong isang event. Yung isang bayan. And their goal is to come up with a single ticket for 2022. Do you think it will ever happen in the Philippines? Uh, it's not that uh, if whether I think it's going to happen or not, no. But uh, I hope for our sakes, uh, they're able to muster a formidable lineup. Na para meron naman tayong clear choice uh, in 2022. Hindi katulad yun ng yari ng 2016 na kalat kalat yung mga tumakbo, no. So I hope that they're able to muster that uh, single and formidable lineup. Yeah, okay. Yes, Professor Kraft, your thoughts? Um, siguro take-off point ko yung tanong mo about the idea of, um, uh, of, of, of uh, whether or not uh, a single formidable lineup can actually uh, uh, compete no? uh, uh, in the uh, uh, next election. No, um, I've heard about this. No, and and I think um, if it's a question of uh, is it possible? No, well, it did happen, right? Remember uh, when uh, this, of course, uh, indicates age again. No, but in 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 the uh, 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 in nine in in uh, during Cory the 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 Cory Marcos, no, it was it was precisely that. Uh, coalescing around no uh, of the opposition no around uh, Cory Aquino which which facilitated no yung ano kay kay Marcos no um, now whether we are at that point where people are so polarized no that this kind of uh, uh, this kind of um, uh, coalescing around one uh, uh, one uh, uh, candidate is possible no. Um, is of course something that that we need to understand, no? Uh, whether that's actually something that's that's going on now. But I think, you know, um, if we're talking about if we're talking about um, last uh, or final messages, it's really the idea na parang um, kailangan talagang pag-isipan ng ng ano na sa bayanan, no? Uh, kung ano ang mas makabuti para sa bayan ngayon, no? Kasi parang ang hirap ng sitwasyon natin na it's more of the same. So in a sense, it's related to what Mike was actually saying about yung iba naman. No? Uh, ang, ang, ang ano natin dito talaga ay kailangan um, uh, uh, mapilitan ang, 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 ano, ang, ang mga botante no? na mag-isip ng ibang, in a different way no? about uh, the prospects no? for the next election. No? Yeah, okay. So, yun pala yung magic word. Chester. Uh, sabi nga nila, uh, your vote sounds familiar. So, kailangan baguhin natin na ito. No? I think this is the best time for us to rethink and reflect. Uh, let's not underestimate that uh, kind of uh, innovative thinking. Kasi kung nakaka-survive tayo sa pandemic, kailangan natin mag-survive in our political reforms also. Uh, we should adapt to the changing times. And let us also uh, optimize 
uh, the uh, call for reforms of the silent majority, or if not even the the the, the young uh, electorate, no, uh, there must be changes that it, uh, should be seen, and um, we need transformative leaders, uh, and also young leaders also who would represent the young electorate. So I think uh, we should innovate and also uh, um, uh, uh, practice best practices no, uh, na nakukuha natin sa ibang bansa. And not only borrowed, kasi yun yung nakita natin. Eh. When we borrow something and we don't implement it properly, it becomes problematic in our system. We should study it. I, it's good that uh, there are, this is also the best time that we do a lot of research, uh, these kinds of discourses, and the uh, education uh, voters know we reach out to to the people and tell to them that we need change and it has to be done now okay thank you so there's nothing wrong with our anthropological roots no <laughs> it's repaired acting ang pananaw ko na ngayon hindi damaged culture kundi repaired culture we have to repair it now yeah. otherwise it's going to be a vicious cycle and we will be trapped by that yeah no araw ay narinig ko diyan now na oh sige so tama yan tama Yes, uh, Kong Ron Salo, please. Yes, Melo. Kapag pinag-usapan itong political reforms or polit- uh, changing or uh, improving our political system, it's such a gargantuan task. Sobrang laki po ito eh, na pag-uusap. At the same time, dahil sa laki po niya, kakailanganin po niya ng bawat sektor, bawat parte ng lipunan po natin, ah, gampanan yung tungkulin at yung papel po niya. And definitely dahil ako isang boses lang pero hindi ko nila lang yung boses ko dahil isa rin po ako sa may may tutulong. So in our own little way dito sa Kabayan Party, sinisikap po natin na maging bahagi dito sa mga pinag-uusapan ng mga reforma. At the same time, pagsusulong po ng mga uh, pagka, mga panukalang batas na higit na magpapaganda at magpapatasantas ng uri ng pumuhay at pag-isip ng mga Pilipino. At the same time, anhin ko yung pagkakataong ito na nagpapasalamat actually ako dito sa party list system. Dahil sabi ko ako kanina, binigyan ako ng boses, nagkaroon ako ng opportunity. Dahil I'll be honest with you, sa lahat po ng mga kasama po natin yan at mga nakikinig, nasuhukan ko pong nung bata pa po ako, kabataan ko po, sumubog po ako sa uh, sangguni ang kabataan. And true enough, tumakbo po ako for chairman, natalo po ako. Bakit? Dahil ang nanalo, ang kalaban ko po, yung anak ng kapitan. So makikita po natin kung chairman pa lang, lang ng sangguniang kabataan, hindi ko kakayanin dahil hindi po ako galing sa isang political na pamilya. So nagpapasalamat po ako dahil itong uh, platform ng party list has given me that voice, has given me that opportunity, has given me the chance to be part in legislating for the whole county. Thank yeah. you, Melo. Thank you. Thank you. That's a very wonderful insight. You know, <clears throat> I just got reminded of... Uh, a place in southern Luzon where members of the family have portrayed themselves as enemies, uh, magkakalaban. Pero in the end, ang pagpipilian mo, sila-sila rin. So somebody asked me, magkakaaway ba talaga yung mga yan? Kilala ni Elmer Bandul itong pamilyang to. Sabi ko, hindi magkakaaway yan. They're not at odds. Bakit mo nasabi? If they're at odds, they could have killed each other, but they have not killed anybody in the family. So it's more of uh, a carousel. Okay? So, you know, I tell you, maraming politiko ang magaling na aktor. Kakaloy. <laughs> uh, maraming salamat, uh, Sir Melo. Uh, bago ang lahat, ako'y nagpapasalamat sa Philippine Press Institute no, for this roundtable discussion. Uh, sa Hans Heidel Foundation, kina Ma'am Carol, at sa ating mga kasamahan ngayon, kay Professor Herman, uh, Dr. Chester, and uh, kompanyero Michael, no? at sa aking uh, matalik na kaibigan din, si Ron, no? uh, sa Kongreso. Uh, napakaraming uh, akong natutunan ngayon, pero siyempre, uh, marami tayong challenges pa rin na hinaharap. At alam natin na ang ating mga mamamayan ay gusto talaga ng tunay na pagbabago. No? sa masalimuot na sitwasyon ito na nasadlak pa tayo sa isang napakatinding krisis nga na pinamalalaan itong pandemya ng COVID. Uh, pero ako naniniwala pa rin na Melo no, na eventually uh, darating yung uh, araw ng pagbabago na yan. No? Kailangan lang natin ituloy-tuloy yung ating mga ginagawa sa ngayon uh, kami sa loob ng Kongreso at maging sa labas ng Kongreso. Dahil eventually ang uh, mamamayan eh, 
uh, sa pagtutulak ng uh, pagbabago ay ang mga mamamayan natin. Kailangan magsimula ito doon sa mga komunidad, mga pamayanan. No? Tuloy-tuloy yung pag-uorganisa, pagmulat at uh, pagmobilisa sa kanila. Dahil sila pa rin, no? ang makapangyarihan, ang mamamayan pa rin. No? Uh, it may be cliche, but uh, ito, yan ang tinuturo sa atin ng kasaysayan. No? Ang nagtatakda ng tunay na pagbabago sa ating lipunan ay talaga ang mamamayan. No? At uh, tayo ay uh, kasama nila sa kanilang uh, uh, mga pagpupunyagi, no? pag, uh, pag, uh, sa Bisaya pa, paningkamot no? sa kanilang gusto ng uh, tunay na pagbabago. At muli, salamat sa pagkakataong ito, Melo, mula sa amin sa bayan muna at sa makabayang black uh, na maipabot rin no? sa ating mga kababayan ng ating uh, tindig sa mga usapin na ito, ng uh, pag-strengthen ng ating partly system paano uh, ma-reforma ang ating politika sa Pilipinas, lalong-lalo na, no, na parating na naman ang isang eleksyon sa 2022 at naghahanap tayo ng mga bagong mamumuno sa atin. No? Uh, mamumuno na hindi magdadala sa uh, mas lalong uh, masalimuot na sitwasyon, kundi talagang uh, kasama natin no? dito sa ating uh, hinahanap na pag-unlad at pagbabago sa ating lipunan. Dagang salamat, Melo. Magandang umaga muli sa ating lahat. Thank you. You know, I'm reminded of uh, a lady from Germany by the name of Angela Merkel who was asked by a reporter, is it that your dress was your dress three or four years ago? And Angela Merkel was reported to have replied, I am a public servant. I'm not a fashion model. So I guess we could learn something, let's say from Germany. Attorney Getz, Henrik. Henrique, please, your thoughts about our discussions and welcome home. <laughs> Thank you very much, Melo. Good morning. Um, my name is Katz Heineke. I'm the resident representative from the Ansel Foundation. I apologize. I was a little bit here um, because I'm still at home. And thanks to Sky Cable, I had yeah, various internet problems this morning. So I was in and out and in and out. And uh, most of the time I was out. Uh, when I was in, I saw really it was yeah quite heavy discussions, uh, two and a half hours. That is even for our roundtable discussions quite long. And so I think I can assume it was really good and really fruit uh, fruitful. Of course, me as a German, I didn't understand much because yeah, <laughs> I, don't, I don't understand Tagalog. But I mean, when when you hear the question and you see the discussions there, you get already a feeling. Um, Yes, it is right, Melo, that, that Angela Merkel doesn't change her dress uh, very often. She, she is what we call down to earth. So she's a very easy person. She's going personally to the supermarket. She's driving a very old car. Um, she's living in a small apartment in Berlin uh, that is very well known where it is. So, um, but that's Angela Merkel's style. Of course, we have different uh, politicians in Germany as well that are not so down to earth. Um, but that's a reason maybe why Angela Merkel is so popular in, in, in Germany, because we consider her really as somebody um, who can speak for the people and who knows what is uh, challenging for the people. Um, having said all this, so I think from my side, it was a wonderful discussion this morning. And thank you very much for, for all the speakers. Thank you very much to you, Melo. Thank you very much to the PPI. Uh, great job once again. I have a small little comment um, because this activity is funded by the Hans Seidel Foundation. Of course, we need to get our money from our headquarter in Germany. Um, and therefore we need to yeah, show them that the activity is good. So please, you'll see now in the chat box, you will see a link for, the, uh, for a little survey, a very easy survey. If you can please participate in this survey, I think it's uh, visible as well on Facebook. Um, it's not even one minute. Um, but if you can please uh, participate so that we get more money to have more activities like this in the future. Um, second remark, uh, same direction. Uh, can you please like us on Facebook? I hope now you will see as well our uh, Facebook uh, link uh, page in, in the chat box. Because my boss in Germany, he's quite young and, and he really believes in, in these Facebook links. And he's always looking on our Facebook Mm -hmm. yeah, we, we always have got to argue with him. Why is it that Hans Al Foundation in Myanmar has 10,000 Facebook likes and in the Philippines you only have got around about 1,500? Is that due to your bad work? Um, 
that's 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 how how young people are thinking. So please do us a favor. I'm 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 47. I'm not of this Facebook generation anymore. But please do us a favor. Like us on Facebook. Um, then we yeah then we are all happy. Uh, having said that, thank you once again to all the speakers. PPI Melo. Uh, I hope to see you again all soon in, in one month and maybe one day, even in real and not in front of a computer. So thank you very much from my side. Mga kaibigan, we'd like to end our discussions by saying thank you to Congressman Carlos Isagani Sarate of uh, Bayan Muna and uh, Ron Salo of uh, Kabayan. To Dr. Herman Joseph Kraft, of uh, the Department of Political Science, College of uh, Social Sciences and Philosophy, UP Diliman, Attorney Michael Henry Usinko, Lecturer and Non-Resident Research Fellow at the Ateneo School of Government at Ateneo de Manila University, and Dr. Chester B. Cabalza, Senior Lecturer, Graduate Program, Department of Anthropology, University of the Philippines, Diliman. And as I said earlier, he had the pleasure to study in Beijing, and in uh, University of Delaware, where Joe Biden comes from. So uh, this is a wonderful discussion. Thank you very much. And let me end by a simple quote. No? Uh, ang sabi by a man named Nelson Mandela, no one is born hating another person because of the color of his skin or his background or his religion. People must learn to hate, and if they can learn to hate, they can be taught to love. For love comes more naturally to the human heart than its opposite. Thank you very much. Have a nice day. God bless us all. Stay safe. Till next Thank time. You. Thank you, Melo.